made me realize that I do not have to subscribe to my fears and that I can pretty much overcome anything. Like the small stuff, the day-to-day stuff that I sweat, my anxiety, you know. It's like, no, look what you accomplished, look what you did. You did hard shit and you finished it. You know, that was like the biggest message to myself. You can overcome your fears and you can do hard shit, you know. Hey to the wonderful Missy Wilson. Hey girl, hey. Hey y'all. I feel like last time we had you on, I told you that every time I say your name, I say it as if I'm introducing um, Missy Elliott. I have to like say it all the time. Anytime <laughs> I think of you, I hear Missy. Like that's just how I reference you in my head. Like I think the guy at like Chipotle one time was like, Missy. Yeah. <laughs> So that's yeah. that's that's where the place you have in my heart. That's how the Thank high you. esteem I have for you that I have to I feel like you deserve that because not every Thank Missy you, deserves yes. that. But uh, this is true. <laughs> facts. So here we are with the amazing, amazing. You're so sweet. Amazing. Missy. Um, she was one of our first guests first season. Um, Missy is a foundational and pivotal reason as to why you all get to participate in the banter and conversation that is rushed vibes. Um, So that is a pedestal that whenever we blow up and get some kind of podcast award, when they start doing that in the future um, and we, you know, do our acceptance speech and have our whole entourage with us, uh, she'll probably be up there in one of some fancy gown um, accepting with us. Podcast awards now. Oh, they do. Yeah, they do. We're that part. We're in that part of the future. No, we're in the present. <laughs> I thought. This I thought is, we it's still. Been a, it's I been th- a thing. I thought we still had a ways to go. Okay. It's gonna happen. So when we it's get when we get our award and we have our whole entourage and they start playing the music and running us out, like she's gonna be one of the people on stage holding it up, you know, in her gown, like she's the reason from day one. So Facts. you know, that's a special piece of my heart that that you carry. Just. And just you being you and you're just inspirational. So we are super excited to let me cut, let me cut it off because Dave is going to interrupt me. No, I'm, 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 he's going to be be honest. He's going to be like, uh, I'm moved. I'm seriously moved over here. This is such a outpouring of affection. I've never seen before. So I I, I don't affect, please continue affection. A lot of people, but I'm enjoying it, but no, I I might get to be on the receiving end of it one day, one day, not today, not not today. Wow. Um, but I do, I do have a great appreciation for, for you and just being able to, the fact that I still, we still have not physically met blows my mind and then Honestly. kind of makes me wonder that maybe we shouldn't meet because I don't know if that's going to mess up our relationship. No, I think, I think <laughs> it'll only be better. It but, will only get better. But you, here. you are an amazing woman. Um, set, definitely one that I look up to and I'm very mm-hmm. just 2022 and what you've accomplished in 2022, which in part is why we are speaking to you tonight has just been so inspiring, um, has got me yeah. considering doing things that I'd never considered doing. Like, being, if we live closer being outside outside because there was yeah. like pandemic outside where it was like we were just going out to eat but like you're outside outside um in elements yes. uh with living creatures and i've considered it like i might you I go might, out with me i might hike hike or two like okay. when we went to saint lucia there was one of the pitones which is one of the, the mountains they had mm-hmm. um a hiking excursion that was two hours and I won't lie, I was like, you know what? If I come back to St. Lucia, I might bring some hiking boots and hike. But then I was like, Missy, no would, more horses. I was like, Miss, no more horses, but I might hike. And I said, no Missy, horses. I said, Missy would probably have to come with us so that I could feel I confident. Stand in those it. horses. They were shady. They, Worst horses in, in the world. They gave us some side. <laughs> um, but enough about us. A little known, little known fact. Actually, it's probably you hike. No, oh. of course not. We all know. You know, I'll be in the house. David be inside. But um, what? Missy is the first repeat guest on Rush Vibes. 
Oh wow, guys! Oh, yeah. so, look at uh, you! Oh, I feel so special. Uh, yeah, record record yeah, breaking, guys, record making vibes is uh, is you've happening had some tonight. Some amazing guests, though. We have not some not so uh, we haven't had too many this season. Uh, right, we, right. We've had a hard time adjusting one to the space. Uh, it was a little easier to have people in last mm-hmm. season because we were in the living room. Right, right. Whereas here we are in the in Rush Vibe Studios. It's a little confined, so uh, mm-hmm. I haven't found a comfortable situation where we could have somebody in here and it still work camera angles and things like that. So everything's had to be, right, right. <clears throat> excuse me, everything's had to be uh, virtual. So, gotcha. uh, but just busy schedules. Jessica's been really busy on uh, this season, and you know we've got three kids, so it's uh it's been tough but Ooh, as you know mm-hmm. love to be a part of rushed vibes yeah uh-huh. uh, especially the middle one so yeah it's been <laughs> um it's been a challenge but you know those things right. we're looking to uh to remedy next season or when we come back from this break yeah so not only is missy our first repeat guest she's actually our last guest before we take our break which is going to come oh. after next episode so we've what are got we gonna do at rush vibes i'm gonna sleep People i'll tell you what i'm gonna do well y'all are but like yeah. That's what I listen to when I'm taking Patrick to school. Well, we'll we've got like 76 other episodes that you can listen to. She's okay. probably, have you listened to all of them? I have, except for when I went to Alaska. That was the only like okay. time that I really missed. So I guess I could go back and catch up. That's yeah. true. So speaking of catching up, amazing segue. That was perfect. Thank you so much, oh, Missy. You're that, was, that, was, that was fantastic. Is that a compliment he just it was, gave you? That was pretty good. I know. I should write it down. They don't have I guess. Often. It's on camera. It's I was going to say, you know, because we put to. our, we happen to put our, our episodes on YouTube. Not sure if you're familiar because I know you don't wander and, over and there very there often. He, there he whoa, canceled whoa, That's um, where I drop my comments. Yeah. She does comment. Like, the like last, I listen two out of the last, on the podcast. Two out of the last three And then I go to YouTube just to comment. Yeah. Thanks for hurting our uh, average view time. Appreciate it. Because I'm pretty sure you just watched long enough. I am a loyal enough. fan. I'm pretty sure okay. you just watched long enough to drop your comment and then you bounce. So she's, she's probably no. our most loyal fan. So. Actually, that all, is incorrect. Okay. All respect to her. All right. Well, I'm happy to be proven wrong. But speaking of uh, catching up, what uh, what have you been up to since you were last on in 2021? 2020? 2021? I don't know what. At the beginning. Oh my beginning. gosh! I don't even remember which year it was it had to be 2021 right uh, so what's what's, what's life been like for missy the last couple life years? has been crazy still but just in a different way um i was leading an outdoor women's group um for black women here in texas and i got a chance to really explore a side of me that i had neglected for a very long time and didn't even realize like that I still had these passions and was passionate about it. And so that took me on an amazing adventure, like local adventure. So I started out just kayaking and paddle boarding and rock climbing and horseback riding and just kind of getting outdoors with some amazing women here in Houston. And then from there, I got an incredible opportunity to go to Alaska on a backpacking trip, which was, I'm still like on a high from it. And I'm still trying to like do that again. Like, I don't think I'll be happy in my like outdoor lane until I get to go to another mountain. (laughs) Maybe not as cold and not as long, but like, I just... Listen, I just want to go to all the you mountains. Know they, got, uh, and just... they got they got Stone Mountain in Atlanta. You could, you could Whoa, <laughs> that's actually the first mountain I ever hiked. Is it? So she's conquered yeah. it already. Okay. I have, but you know it's just like a big piece of granite. Yeah, right? I know. I know. Okay. I, I, so I but yeah, going... that was like my first hike when I was like five. That's so, what so if you mind me asking, what? Um, because I know because we'll talk about it, but you were you were featured. Um, in Shape Magazine, which is really, which is really awesome. Uh, but you mentioned right. here, and then both, in, both in the in the article that you know you 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 were exposed to uh, the outdoors. I think by your aunt, right, growing mm-hmm. up, and um, you mentioned just now that there had been sort of a bit of a gap. So what kind of what kind of caused you to to not be as outdoorsy? I guess um, in between, I guess though, I, I guess when you were younger, and then when you sort of rediscovered. I started going yeah, back outside. So, yeah. Um, 
when I was in college, I was still pretty outdoorsy. I had friends that loved to camp and we would go on hikes and go camping and I was still kayaking then. Um, but honestly, I just think it was life. Like I moved back to Atlanta and even though my aunt is outdoorsy, like, you know, she was, I think she, at that point when I moved back, she had just gotten married and, you know, she was going on trips with her friends and then I didn't have a lot of friends that were outdoorsy. Um, like I could probably get my friends to the park and that's about it. And then I married a man that's not outdoorsy <laughs> or, or I should say we dated and he wasn't really outdoorsy. Sure. Um, and then I moved to Houston and while there are some things to do outside, it's not like if you compare it to Austin, it's not an outdoorsy city. Um, like, I feel like you'd have to, like, research. And then also there was just the fear of doing it alone. I didn't, one, I didn't know where to go. And two, I didn't want to do it by myself. Um, I even think now with it, even though I'm, like, so adventurous now, I would think there is still a little bit of fear of doing it solo. And so I think that at that time, that was, like, a huge issue. Like, um, my mom didn't want me kayaking by myself which I understand. And then again, like I didn't have a lot of friends in Houston when I moved here and especially no outdoorsy friends. So I think that's kind of, you know, made me have that large gap, um, which was actually like 10 years, believe it or not. It's a long time. It is like not doing anything like outside Did of like a walk in the park. Wow. Big gap. That's uh, and I mean, I and what what kind of what filled that time, uh, when the ten years that you weren't being outdoors, hmm, like what were your work. What, what were you doing for fun? Let's see, work maybe. Uh, I don't know actually. <laughs> now that you ask, what was I doing? Um, I guess I was trying to get used to Houston and you know, the different lifestyle here in Texas, and then, you know, I had a. I had some friends, but like, you know, they were mostly like my work friends. So sometimes we would go, you know, out after work or whatnot. But for the most part, I was kind of like, it was just Craig and I and our dog <laughs> for a long period of time. You know, we'd go hang out on the weekends. We'd go to the gym, um, try a new restaurant, you know, kind of like nightlife. And then we moved to the suburbs mm. and the suburbs. I was trying to be uh <laughs> A fun young woman, you know, hanging out with the older ladies. I was playing bunco and, you know, going to church a lot, <laughs> a lot of suburban stuff. But uh, yeah, I don't know. But I definitely wasn't doing the whole outdoors thing. And I honestly like I don't think I missed it at the time because it didn't even hit me like, oh, why don't you go kayaking, you know, or why don't you go hiking? And yeah, I don't remember, like, why I just didn't go do it. And I also think that, like, social media has a huge part in it because now you can go on Facebook and join an outdoorsy mm -hmm. group. But back then, I feel like there was still, like, some stigma, like, whoa, whoa, Who watch you? out for those Facebook <laughs> groups, or, you know. So people go to disappear. Uh, exactly, like, watch out for Craigslist. Like, no, we're not doing that. You know? <laughs> like, how would you have found you know, a hobby or a passion. Like, I guess Meetup was starting out. Mm -hmm. But other than that, and I, I was actually a member of um, Outdoor Afro Houston for years and never attended an event. Um, one, because we ended up moving to Beaumont, which is about two hours away from Houston. Um, and they didn't have a chapter there. So I just, you know, kind of swept it on the rug and like let life happen. I guess you could say. So I want to take it further back to just expanding on your aunt, your your relationship with your aunt and just what's your first memory of being outdoors, outside? Um, and how did it help shape you gaining a love for being outside? Yeah, um, it definitely was Stone Mountain. Um, my grandparents live in Stone Mountain. <laughs> And my aunt, I don't know what she was doing. She was either home from her assignment because she worked with AmeriCorps and Outward Bound. 
So she was either home from college or home from that assignment. And she was like, hey, let's go on a hike. And so um, it was me and a friend of hers. We went up Stone Mountain. And I remember loving it. Um, There's a church in my grandparents' neighborhood, and you could actually see the top of the church from the mountain. And so as a five-year-old, I was like, oh, my gosh, I drive by that every time we go to Papa Dennis's house. And it's so cool that I can see it up here. And then I also remember that I did not have all the right shoes. <laughs> so it's like, oh, my gosh, I got to get the right gear. And just the fact that me being so little, I conquered this mountain, you know, I, I thought that was huge. Like, oh, my gosh, I can see the incredible views and I've got to do this again. And I was so grateful to her. I was like, oh, my gosh, like we should do this again. <laughs> she was like, oh, I got to go back to where I live. But yeah, we'll do this again. And she kept her promise because she took me camping probably like a year and a half later. And so that was like my first camping trip. So a lot of my like first outdoor experiences were with her. And she's like the cool auntie. And I feel like my aunties are like my big sisters too. They're mm-hmm. like second moms, big sisters, you know. Um, but she tro- she totally exposed me. And even to this day, like I can go to her and um, her partner's house and like Aunt Tana and I like raid their closet and take all their outdoor gear. Like they loaded me up before I went to Alaska. So mm-hmm. it's kind of full circle. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they've, they've been so supportive and really exposed me to um, a lot of the outdoorsy world. So I feel like a lot of people don't have that. Like some people just get out there and test it out. But I definitely had like a foundation and so grateful to her for it. If you don't mind me asking, I don't know that you know for sure, but how did she get into it? Now, that is a good question. I should probably ask. Um, I do know that I do know about her Outward Bound experience. So she um, was an AmeriCorps alum and AmeriCorps is kind of similar to Peace Corps, but they Mm -hmm. do everything here domestic. I'm actually a AmeriCorps alum as well. Um, But her assignment was with Outward Bound, and I believe they were in Boston. And so they would take um, underserved inner city youth and expose them to outdoors and nature. And so usually the program is about, I would say, 12 to 15 months. Um, You can also extend. Mm -hmm. But she did that for a good little while. So she was... um, taking the kids backpacking and teaching them about leadership and outdoor skills. And I think that's where she kind of gained her passion for Mm -hmm. it. But I should definitely ask her. um, That might be something I'll give her a call this week and be like, so how did you get into this? Now, she was a soccer player in college and like high school and stuff. Um, My grandparents had a pool. So like the normal stuff I feel like she always did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like she, I've always known her to be super outdoorsy and even like on their honeymoon, they did a lot of hiking and backpacking and visiting hostels and stuff. So it's kind of like their set nature. Like, I feel like they always pair a vacation with some type of outdoorsy activity. That is cool. So coming back to the semi-present, what what was the trigger? What was the, in Oprah terms, aha moment that made you say, I need to get back. I need to get back on a hike, hiking trail. I need to get back in a kayak. I need to be active again. Yeah. It was the pandemic. <laughs> it was the pandemic. I was like, who am I? Well, really, it was tomorrow's not promised. Mm-hmm. Any of us could leave tomorrow and would I be content with the things that I've accomplished and it's like okay outside of you know being a wife being a mom who is Melissa Mm. what has Melissa done it was very and it was very deep Mm. that you said over there because I can you you feeling that because as a wife as a mother I can absolutely identify to that statement where yeah your life becomes about 
other people them. and supporting right, and representing exactly. others. So it's like you have moments where you're like, who am I? What yeah. What do I who like? What do what, right. what makes me happy? <laughs> what do I like? So yeah. I, I I did I felt that in my in my yeah. it like went to my spirit, then it went to my soul. Like it was yes. both, both. And that them. that is honest. Like I remember um you know, being in with my therapist and she was like, What are your twenty things? What do you like? What makes you you happy? And I was like, Well, I like spending time with them on the weekends and I like going places and it was just like, no, no, no. What makes you, you happy? And I was like, Oh, this is gonna take some time. <laughs> and I literally and she was like, Okay, your your homework, sorry, but your homework is I need a list of twenty things that make you happy, the outside of them. And um, it took me, it was, I'm a little ashamed to say how long it took me to make the list. Um, and I, I just think that sometimes that that's just how life works when you become a mom mm-hmm. and a wife. You know, like you said, you kind of put yourself on the back burner because you're taking care of everyone else. And then also, like, at the end of the day, who has time? <laughs> you gotta make time. You know what I mean? I think time is a big thing. Speak of the devil. Hi, mm-hmm. sweetie. But yeah, so I, I I started writing that list and I was trying to remember what brought me joy back then. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, I really used to love kayaking. And I should try to find that again. And like that stood out the most to me. Cause I and I really did. Like I love going kayaking. Um, I would actually go kayaking in, um, there's a lake near High Point. Is it Lake Heiko? I can't remember, but there's a lake near High Point University that I used to go kayaking on. And it would always drive my mother crazy because she would say, you know, please call me right before you get on the water. And I would actually do it by myself because, yeah. again, my my friends and I would go camping, but never kayaking like that was something I did solo. Right. Um, but I really, really did enjoy it. And that's what brought me to my Google search of where can I go kayaking in Houston or where can I go kayaking in Austin? Cause Austin and Houston are kind of night and day when it comes to outdoorsiness. Mm -hmm. And, um, there's so much to do up there where here you kind of have to do a little bit more research. Um, but yeah, Google is my best friend because it changed my life <laughs> by just doing one search of black women kayaking. And that's what actually popped up. The first thing that popped up was black women who kayak plus. So you had said something earlier that it's an accomplishment. And I kind of want when I kind of wanted you to expand on that. What? And this might like get psychologically deep with like endorphins and all those fancy like professional words. Um, you don't have to go that deep. endorphins. Um, but oh, what wow. what do you? What's the goal with with? Because you know you have people like me who are not outdoorsy. I'm thinking about mosquitoes and crickets and bears and <laughs> mountain lions and more bears and lizards that you know if you accidentally touch them they kill you and spiders that bite these are the things that are going and snakes <laughs> and all of the snakes um these are the right. things that are going through my mind but what is in the trajectory of i'm just gonna say being outdoorsy what it, what's the end goal what are you striving to achieve i guess so I feel like it changes. So when I first got back into being outdoorsy, like I just wanted a view. Like I wanted an incredible, like I wanted to hike and I wanted the peak to be just an amazing view, right? And for some reason, no matter what trip I planned before Alaska, they all fell through. And then I got to Alaska and I got my incredible view and I was like, oh, God was preparing me for this. Um, So then the view was the accomplishment, the goal, like I need to see a view. Now it's just being outdoors and being in nature. Like, of course I think about those things too. 
Um, even when I was in Alaska, like we were in bear country, like we came across several bear footsteps, scat, like we had to do bear calls the whole nine. Um, but if you're prepared, you don't like let that deter you from getting out there. Um, but yeah, so now it's just like being one in nature and it just fills my soul and I'm, it's so healing being out there. Um, even something as small as like glamping or camping just kind of, it's like a reset and it's like, the only thing I can compare it to is, um, like when you go to the spa. Mm Mm-hmm. And you're just completely relaxed. I get the exact same feeling being outdoors. And it, I don't know how to describe it other than that. Like, it's just pure relaxation. And, um, yeah. You got to feel it to know it. Right. Yeah. So, obviously, you've referenced God several times. So, we'll go yes. out on a limb and assume that you are oh a gosh. believer in, of God. I am. <laughs> what would you... So I know like I'll see a sunset for me. I'm a city girl, so I love seeing a skyline view. Uh, I appreciate like a natural view. I love foliage just being from Massachusetts. I appreciate that. But for you, someone who is deeper in the elements, what what's that spiritual spiritual sensation that that you get? How would you can you even describe that? So so like I said, for some reason, like I tried to plan four different trips in 2022 before Alaska and literally every one of them fell apart. Like I was supposed to try to go backpacking in Big Bend, which is here in Texas that fell through. I was trying to go on a hike with my family that fell through. But when I was out there, like you can't, you know, you can't take a look into the mountains or the sun setting or the night sky and not think that God isn't the ultimate creator and the ultimate artist. Mm -hmm. Like I felt so close to God being out there. And on my last day, this is kind of, you know, emotional on my last day before we hiked out, I sat at the river and I, I just bawled my eyes out. Like, I cried because I was like, when am I going to see something like this ever again? Or when am I going to experience something like this? And the cleansing feeling of just like putting my hands in the water, putting my feet in the water and sitting next to it. Like, I don't have anything like that right here next to me in Houston. You know what I mean? Like, I'd have to travel to get that. But to wake up for in the view that you have like I've never felt closer to God than at the than that week and it was truly moving and emotional and um I was like I had a lot of emotions just because the trip itself was tough like it was so tough oh my gosh um like I'm very very grateful that I went through it and I had all of the emotions while I was out there but it was just like moving and also I was immensely grateful to have that experience but to be out there for those eight days like and just you your thoughts and God with you and I know I prayed to him so many 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 times because there's a few times I was a little more scared than I thought um so I feel like he was with me through the entire trip and then just sitting at that river and it was so healing it was kind of like like you get the reason why we go to the water to be baptized Mm -hmm. um and that's like the biggest thing that i can like attribute it to um but yeah when you see something like that and go through something like that it it definitely brings you closer to your spiritual beliefs so i'm gonna um segue from being politically correct and just dive right into it um Mm -hmm. black girls black women black people uh, (laughs) commonly not referred to as 
outdoorsy. Correct. Um, I, it's, you know, just, I don't know who may have established this stereotype, but, you know, we're indoorsy. We, you know, where it's safe within our four walls. We're not going to go, you know, tempt fate. The Lord brought us here. We're not going to give him a reason to take us out. <laughs> right. So what is that stigma like being a black woman in this area this arena that isn't typically associated to black women black people but mm -hmm. there are a lot of us who enjoy this uh, what is right. that like how do you have to explain it do you roll your eyes like what what goes into <laughs> being part of that demographic yeah, I definitely, um, you know, I live in Texas, so you get, oh, black women who do this. Why does it have to be a race mm. thing? Why does it have to be a, you know, a gender thing? You get all kinds of comments that you just have to, you know, ignore. Sometimes if you're really in the mood, you address it. But, you know, I just kind of ignore them. But the biggest thing is the... Um, mansplaining we've gotten that on a couple of trips um most recently i took a group of ladies out paddle boarding and we were coming back from being out in the water for probably about two hours and so some of us were like sitting on our boards and paddling with our like we were kind of like kneeling down and was still paddling and this white gentleman comes up and he's like well that's not how you do it and it's like just mind your damn business <laughs> like no one has asked you we're all in our black girl magic enjoying ourselves in the water and like you just gotta say something you know i think that nine times out of ten um is what we get the most is like well it's, you're almost there keep going uh, do you have the right gear it's like their way of I'm pretty sure they think they're checking on you, but it's kind of unnecessary, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we get that a lot, believe it or not. Um, even I took my aunt and Patrick and I went on a hike and this guy was just like, kind of just, oh, watch out here, watch out there. And it's like, yeah, thanks. We're like, good. We're good. I appreciate it, but you know, I do this on the regular, so. <laughs> So you watch out. <laughs> right, exactly. And it's like, is he just doing this to us? Because he didn't comment to the family behind us. Mm -hmm. It was just us. And so like, you try not to be that person, but it's like, huh, okay. You know, but like, and now I, I hope that it's changing because we're almost everywhere now. Mm -hmm. Like you've got outdoor Afro, you've got soul track. Oh, got thought, black women who kayak. I thought you just meant black people in general. I'm like we've been everywhere for a while. No, I mean <laughs> like I there is an outdoor around. group for you. We've been around for a minute. I thought you were saying the same thing because I was like, oh my bad. No. Black people been. I mean, no, no, no. we be like, original people. You know what I'm saying? I've been saying that about <laughs> Africans too. I'd be like, you can find an African we've anywhere. Been, been around for a minute. So. Listen, okay. no, we've I'm, always been out there, yeah. Yeah. and that's the thing. Like, I don't know if you guys watched. Um, is it high on the hog? You know I watched that. Jessica watched Yes, it. I know you watched it. But it made me think the um, the community that travels only by water. Mm -hmm. It made me think about paddleboarding and how that is their one of their routes of transportation. And how are you going to go tell that woman that she don't know what she's doing or she's not supposed to be outdoors? Psh. It's so funny you bring that up because I was literally on Instagram this morning and one of mm -hmm. the African groups that I follow, they had posted, there's this village, I think it's in Gambia, it might be in Benin, I can't remember, but mm -hmm. it's the it's the water village, like all right. of their, to escape you know colonialism, they built houses and everything. There's this woman in a boat, she's literally frying plantain. There were kids in the water and oh I wanted gosh. to reshare it and like, that stigma of black people can't swim. I was like, these people live in a water village. They absolutely need to know how to exactly, swim. Exactly, right. Um, so it's so funny that you bring that up because just this morning I was looking at that video and I was thinking the same thing. Like, Please share that with me because will, it is it's true. It. Like, And I, I tell, you know, because unfortunately, 
there is a huge stigma with black people in the water. And unfortunately, a lot of it is based upon systemic racism. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't have access to pools. We didn't, we weren't taught how to swim. We weren't allowed, like, it just stems from that. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it is passed down generationally of not being able to swim. And so there is a huge stigma and fear about getting in the water. And I, we have a lot of women in our group that unfortunately still don't know how to swim. And so a lot of these organizations are partnering with swim schools to first teach them. You know, you can get in a kayak without knowing how to swim, um, but you would feel a lot more confident if you can Mm -hmm. swim, you know. And so I think that's one thing that's just an amazing effort is making sure the members know how to swim first and then let's get them on the water. And also you should have a healthy respect for nature in general, you know. Um, But yeah, that... That lady, I I didn't watch, I haven't seen that video, but just seeing the community being on those rafts and being in those boats, and that was their way of life. And it's like, we've been doing this since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. Who told you that we don't belong here? I know who, but you know, like, that's, don't let that stop you. And that's no longer, you know, because it's not just us. There are so many BIPOC organizations that are breaking out, um, Latino outdoors, um, I'm drawing a blank, but literally the BIPOC community is getting outside and it's no longer like, hey, this is not, you know, a white only activity Mm -hmm. or it's for everybody. And hopefully we're going to be the last generation to deal with this. You know, the mansplaining and fingers crossed. I guess outdoor splaining, I should say. Um, but yeah, like we weren't allowed in national parks in the 50s and 60s. So that's another thing that people don't think about. And then I don't know. It, it It's definitely like I said, I didn't want to get into a group unless I was with people that looked like me. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't want to discuss politics and religion here and everything. Like I want someone that I could just kick back and, you know, kiki with and go on a hike. So that's kind of another reason why I search for a group specifically for black women. Um, and I got really lucky <laughs> cause it's an amazing group. And, um, but yeah. I hope that we are the last generation that has to deal with this. I I, I hope so too. You kind of led into what was going to be my next question, but, and I kind of know it as a black woman, but from your perspective in this arena that is typically associated to white men for the most part, Mm -hmm. what is the benefit? What do you gain by specifically being able to do this activity, these activities that you enjoy specifically with people who look like you it's a sisterhood and a community more than anything and it's bonding over something just everyday nature you know like i'm in a like i'm in two groups so i'm a member of black women who kayak and then i am a member of black girls who camp or black girls camp and we plan these groups, you know, and we plan these gatherings together and just to be able, you know, because sometimes we, as women, we get a bad rap of just like, oh, women, you know, they're so petty, they're catty, da, 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 da. And it's like, I haven't experienced any of that. Like, it's all love when we come together mm-hmm. and we get to talk about being moms or being teachers, our everyday lives and we get to just put that on the back burner and just like let go and heal in nature together. And it's been like, I used to feel like, Oh man, I don't have any friends in Houston. Blah, blah, blah. And I have like this whole sisterhood of friends now. And that's been so important to me. I have these ladies that I can call on and I'm like, Hey girl, I'm, you know what? 
I need a hike. And I know that I don't have to do it alone. And that's been like so overwhelmingly just beautiful for me that I get to hang out with these ladies and we get to experience something new. I need a hike. I don't know why that was so like powerful hearing because yeah. it kind of sounds like I need a hit, but it's a hike. <laughs> but I, I feel like in the grand scheme of things, you're almost getting a similar effect. Obviously, you know, yeah, a narcotic gives you, you know, all, right. all the other stuff. But I mean, right. just because I just like using the word endorphins because I yeah. don't get to use it often. But no, just it is. the endorphins and the dopamine and all of that release, like, and just simply knowing that whatever you're going through, a hike is enough to release that, to, to, right. to, to clear your mind. And I, I just mm -hmm. think that's beautiful and it's inspiring. Uh, I'm not saying I'm gonna go hike tomorrow. Uh, I don't have hiking. I'm gonna get you outdoors. I'm you gonna fly will. to Charlotte I, you, just to get you outdoors. You will, I've said it, like we are two exits away from the Whitewater right. Center. I, no. I have zip lined once my freshman year of college, we were mm -hmm. in a learning community and it was like the week before school started, we moved in early and they wanted to get us to do things. And that was probably my first real, I've camped before. I didn't mm -hmm. like it because a mosquito was in the tent and I woke up with like oh no, 30 mosquito so bites. Um, but that's so wrong. I vividly remember, you know, 18 years old, freshman in high school. And I had, we had zip lined, but we also like climbed this thing and we had to walk across it and we're attached to this lever, like, these ropes and stuff and I remember I was horrified because there were bees and because the thing we were walking on was wood so they were carpenter bees so everyone was like just relax like they're not interested in stinging you they just want the wood right. but I'm still like these are MF bees. bees like right <laughs> uh, so just having to like relax myself and be in a really uncomfortable situation and walk across and have these people I don't know telling me I can do it and it was one of those like group building activities but right. that's like the closest I've been to truly like going outside of my comfort zone in in terms right. of like not laying by a cabana or something like that and I did right. enjoy it and I would love to do it again but I would love mm -hmm. to control the elements but you know hearing right. someone who's like me who does it because again this arena is typically white people so you know if i am on facebook and seeing a friend doing it it's probably a white friend who's doing it and you know you mm -hmm. just don't feel like i, I don't want to be i, I don't want to be the token black friend who's just tagging along do like i've always want I, i've wanted to ski when i lived in massachusetts right. i skied um at school but it's not something that i would even know how to figure out how to do so right. how does if someone says someone's watching this interview they're inspired by you where do they start? So first you would decide, do you want to just be with a group of all women or do you mind being a co-ed group? Because okay. if you are in the BIPOC community, um, you can go online. There's literally a Facebook group, like Outdoor Afro is co-ed. Um, there's Healing to Hike. We Heal to Hike. I believe that's a women's group. But literally just, I would type in co-ed or women only black outdoor groups and you'd be surprised what's going to pop up um they're literally popping up in all the major cities and even in like chap smaller chapters in the suburban areas um but like i look at black women who kayak they're in i believe it's 12 states um and so they're popping up all over. Now they are a women only group. And sometimes they do have family events. Um, Black Girls Camp is a women's only group, but there are family events as well. So there's times, excuse me, um, where you can bring your entire family or it's just you, you know, but literally Google is your first and Facebook and Meetup are your second. And Meetup has a lot of outdoor groups. Like I said, I was a member of Outdoor Afro. Since I moved to Houston, I was just too chicken to get out there and try it out. Um, but I would definitely start there first. So my, and I feel like I've commandeered this, but that's fine. Uh, Cause that's what I do. <laughs> but <laughs> if <laughs> you, in this is Missy's world and you could orchestrate the perfect 
experience it doesn't have to just be one thing but what would what is that for you what is that dream activity location event arena that you you're either striving for or once you do it you're like ah i've done it yeah i don't i honestly i'm not sure it's either like hawaii or bali and it's got to have water and a hike. Like I want to, I want some type of water activity. I want a hike and a spa day. <laughs> like if I could do just like two weeks of that, I feel like, you know, I'm good. You can. I'm good. Come take me now. You're like, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm probably good, you know, <laughs> but definitely. Um, Cause you know, I wasn't a, like I was a hiker, but I wasn't a backpacker. And so like, now I've been backpacking. And so I'm like, oh, wow, like this is new for me, but I've accomplished it. And so I definitely want to start doing this whenever I travel. Like I at least would like to do like a day hike or something every place I go. If there is a mountain peak trail, like I want to do that as well, along with the bar and lounge nightlife type stuff. You know? Yeah. So I, I'll catch you. No, no, After you will wake up with me oh, okay. in the morning. Because you said bar at nightlife. I was like, that's my vibe. I will catch you. We just go, we just not going to sleep that one night. Okay. And we just going go we to go to the hike Red, in the Red Bull all day. So that's right. one thing I want you to clarify, because just using context clues, it seems mm-hmm. like backpacking and hiking are not the same. Hiking, just what you're saying, kind of sounds like it's more short term, like an activity. So you can... so. T- this is what has been explained to me and from what I know. So hiking is anything a mile or more. You don't necessarily need tools to go on a hike. So what is a it if it's can, under a mile? Like just a walk, a trot? Uh, yeah, it's just a skip, a walk, skip, hop, yeah. and a jump? Okay. And this is going off of um, the 52 hikes a year. This is what I got from them. This is what qualifies as a hike. Um, so anything over a mile and like five miles or more is a hike. The difference with backpacking is with backpacking, you need food, shelter, water, because you're not going to be returning to your starting point. Mm -hmm. You're either usually hiking out or doing a loop back or coming back in. So for instance, in Alaska, we were dropped off in a bush plane with food, fuel, water, and like sleeping shelter all in our packs. So I was carrying 45 pounds through Alaska. So when you say bush plane, um, let's, 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 (laughs) let's expand on that. They were literally doing the propeller like this. The visual I got is you jumped out of a plane. No, I didn't jump out of nothing. Okay. (laughs) No. Cause I am steel. I ain't jump on nothing. That part. No. I just don't um, like. I don't like this title, bush plane. Um, it's just not. Comforting. I didn't like it either. Like I thought that was going to be the most the scariest part of my adventure. It was not. <laughs> it was not. What was the scariest part? The scariest part. It was a bunch of scary parts, but let's see the scariest part. The scariest part was probably hiking down a drainage, a very, very steep drainage that was full of fine rocks. And you had to bury the um, the base of your hill to create a step. When I got to the bottom of that drainage, I literally cried like just bawling my eyes out I probably cried like almost every day of that trip but definitely that was like I might might make it home to Patrick (laughs) like my mom was gonna kill me if she knew what I was doing like it was that tough so that was the scariest part did everybody in this Alaska group feel this way like oh yeah except for our instructors they were cool because they they this is what they do they've done this several well they hadn't done this specific uh route in the Talkeetness, but yes, one gr- like, yes, everyone was feeling like this at different points of the trip. So did you go in prepared, like no, or was it just, oh, look, this trail, oh, now we need to go down this, this drainage. And so 
weather threw us off majorly. Okay. Um, we were, it's the summer, so it was August 2022. Summer months in Alaska isn't as cold as it usually is, but we caught some cold, wet, rainy days. And it, um, it delayed us a day and a half. So originally a specific eight day trip turned into six days of hiking. So we lost two days of hiking due, due to the weather because our bush plane couldn't land. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't able to drop us off and our materials and stuff. So we had to basically hike in wet, cold rain. There were some snowy mornings. <sighs> It was tough. My gear, like all of my layers got soaked. So there was one night where I had stage one hypothermia. I wasn't the only one. A couple of us got her hypothermia. Stage one, it didn't progress, but stage one was enough for me. How do you even treat that? I didn't know there were stages. I, I just know hypothermia and like death or fingers get stages. cut off, toes get cut off. There were stages, oh, so there are we had to, to um, we basically, I had to change out of my like wet layers, try to find something warm. I was eating just chunks of <laughs> peanut butter, trying to get some type of fat to help warm my insides. And then I was uh, drinking hot water, again, trying to stay warm. I had a Nalgene bottle on my person full of hot water to try to warm up jumping around jumping jacks anything type of movement to kind of keep it like let the blood and circulation flow i had to change into cold wet clothes the following morning like it was tough (laughs) like again i loved alaska i felt so close to god will i go backpacking in alaska for eight days Again, not so sure. I feel like will I go backpacking again? Yes, of course. I feel like any stage of hypothermia will make you feel close to um, oh. God. Yeah, yeah, she like was about to meet him. I feel like right. right. And I just kept thinking of my mother. Like if she if she has to come out here and claim my body, she's going to dig me back up and kill me again because mm-hmm. she told me to be careful. She, That's you, all I kept thinking of. You going she she would be livid. Um, Living. A lot yes, of us I, would be upset. We would have yes. been. Hot. I was retelling the story. She's like, I, I, I can't hear anymore, Melissa. I, I can't hear anymore. But you, you've been like, I made it home. Like that's that's what matters. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that's what I keep telling. But she also had Patrick, so she was like, come get my grandson, and you know. Oh. Yeah, Mama's- but it it definitely. It, I felt so invincible after that trip. Because I don't think I had ever overcome those types of fears to where there's no way out. Like, you have to hike home. Like, there's one way in and there's one way out. And the only way you can leave is if there is a medical emergency. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like childbirth. And I did compare it. I think in one of the articles, I can't remember which one, but they asked me and they're like, I was like, literally, it was all of the emotions and I could compare it to childbirth. Because I remember with each kid, I would have a moment where I was like, I have to birth this person. Like, that's the that's the that's how this story ends. There's no just waking up in a baby like I have to go through it. And that's like as you're telling this, that's what it sounds like, where it's just I I need to go through it. There's no ifs, ands or buts about it. Right. Exactly. You just gotta go exactly yeah so this is my um my tough question for you Mm -hmm. how would you say now that you're you're i would say a powerhouse black woman in this arena how are you and i don't like this term but i'm just gonna use it how are you or how do you plan to pay it forward Mm. yeah so I haven't really decided how I'm going to do it, but I would love to do something similar to what my aunt did. And I'd love to partner with elementary and middle school and high school and take kids out into nature and teach them about these skills and how it 
can help them in the workforce and having these leadership skills and also just tapping into something that has been healing for me could do the same for them. So in 2023, that is what I am working on is how can I bring kids out into nature? So I'm working on getting more certifications. Um, so I am qualified to take these kids out and teach them. And then also just getting more women and black folks outdoors um, is my main goal. I want to share the love with what I have learned in backpacking and hiking and camping and stuff and continue to spread that. So that's definitely my goal for 2023. I love that. And I know just mm -hmm. looking at your social media, you got Patrick out there in the elements. Um, sometimes I, I have concerns, like when you post <laughs> pictures of snakes and I'm like, not the baby out in the elements yes, and the he... snakes. And then you just nonchalantly like, oh, here's a copperhead. What, sis? Why? Yes. That's now he a, wasn't on that trip, I but know. definitely. But he was on that path. He's been on that trail, right? He has been on that trail yeah. a couple of times. I keep up. I I keep up. You on it? He has been on that trail because it's very close to us. But yeah, um, I do take him out because I want him to be exposed. And honestly, like he's he's my little, little road dog. Like mm -hmm. you know. He uh, he loves it, the outdoors. So that's been our next thing is he's I'm going to take him camping. So I'm very excited about that. And he's actually with me experiencing these things with him. It's like calming my mom anxiety mm -hmm. because I was so scared to take him kayaking. Like I was like, I'm not doing that. He's got to be eight. And like I did it when he was four and he did better than I expected. And I was like shocked. He only asked for the phone twice. <laughs> so that was like a huge accomplishment. <laughs> and he only put his hands in the water maybe three times. So that was like a okay. win for the both of us. Because okay. I definitely thought that he was going to be up to something. But no, he did really, really good. And it it helps. Because sometimes I, th I think as moms, we get overstimulated. Mm -hmm. But like being out in nature, it calms the both of us which is shocking. Now there are some things like when I took him on the mountain um, in it, near Atlanta in coming Georgia, I was like, get, get your little butt over here. Mm -hmm. Like I had to like yoke him up a little bit, but for the most part, he listened very well and he has a healthy risk or he's learning a healthy respect for nature. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's most important. Like we can have our fun, but at the same time, like we have to have a respect for, absolutely and so um i'm hoping to instill that in him at an early age because we're gonna be camping when he's like hopefully he'll still want to camp with me when he's a teenager you know fingers crossed i'm, I'm sure separate tents. hold on to that magic for as long as i can <laughs> you know so what's the next trip where what's the next adventure oh no i was supposed to go on a ski summit up in um Rebel Stoke in British Columbia in Canada, but oh, unfortunately, logistics. I know I'm so bummed that didn't like I got a scholarship and everything and it fell through. Um, but I believe the girls and I from Alaska were supposed to be planning a get together. Um, we want to try to travel together at least um, once a year, and hopefully, it's not type two fun like Alaska. We're gonna do mm -hmm. something a little bit more type one fun. Which in the outdoor world, that just means like relaxing, easy breezy, not that BS up on the mountain, you know. <laughs> um, so I think that will probably be my next trip. Um, we've thrown around, I think, Baja. And I think someone wants to go skiing. Like we have a couple of options that we're going to discuss. But yeah, so we'll see. Like and his it. trip to Charlotte, of course. Yes, I'm it's down David for the, I'm down for the White Water Center. Really? Thought, okay. That that can be my introduction to things. Um, yeah. Because I've never. Is kayaked. David outdoorsy? Are you outdoorsy, David? No, he's inside. -y. Nate, David, <laughs> David be inside. I'm probably more outdoorsy. <laughs> David be inside. Uh, I no, I I, I um. Uh, now that I'm getting a chance to speak. Um, <laughs> I, like this I enjoy 
I uh, actually enjoy going outside. I'm not as like nature trail uh, hiking um, type outside. That's not something I do with any frequency, but I actually don't mind. Mm-hmm. I don't mind going outside. I'm, I'm used to being outside. My mom kicked us outside every summer, all day long, every day. So yeah, um, I'm, I'm used to that. Obviously, um, you know, not used to dealing with like snakes and, and animals and, or, and other uh other things in the element like that but no I, I i'm not averse to going outside it's just not it's not like my first uh yeah. the first thing that i would i would want to do if i had free time but i think it would be i think it'd be kind of cool and i love the fact that you have uh patrick uh going out there with you and you're introducing him to that and like you said teaching him that respect for for nature uh, right. because not a lot of people appreciate it um mm. not at all to make this about me but just i i uh, I recognize that myself in the pandemic because I would go outside and I would just sit like out back and I would just right. hear like you hear things running through the yard. You'd hear stuff, you know, ruffling through the leaves on the ground in the in the, the, the woods up on top of the hill. You hear the birds chirping right. or whatever. And it's just if you just if you just sit and you're still and you're silent, like you can have like ridiculous connections that you, you really never really thought possible. Um, right. or I never really thought was possible, so I, I definitely have an appreciation for it. Um, but I just, I just don't go, like, yeah, don't be outside like that very <laughs> often. I get it. Yeah, no, I, and and I want to say, like, I'm not the biggest, like, just because I came in contact with snakes and I didn't see a bear, but I saw bear footprints and bear scat, like the entire time we were hiking in Alaska. And like, we did see a baby, we saw a moose and her calf. And then I saw caribou and sheep, but like, I like to see them from far away. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to like come in contact with them. I was a little afraid when I saw that copperhead because he did not move. Like, he's like, this is my trail. (laughs) Go find another one. And I was like, okay. You got (laughs) it. I was like, this is you. <laughs> so I would fit like, honestly, even though I've been outdoorsy all these years, these are the first time I've ever come in contact with these animals. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm not like those people at uh, the Smoky Mountains and stuff that get a little too close. I give them their space. Yeah, because it's you theirs. Know? Yeah, exactly. It is theirs. Uh-huh. It is theirs. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, um, I I applaud you, and I think you are, you and these groups that you're a part of are setting an example of just breaking the mold and breaking the stereotypes and just, you know, getting people to want to try something new, something out of the ordinary. You know, brunch and mimosas are fun, but yeah, let's, I mean, I'm always going to pick brunch and mimosas first. But I mean, if somebody suggested, like, camping. let's let's climb Crowder's Mountain, which is a local mountain to us. Like, I, I've had the thought to do it, but, like, I'm just like, well, who wants to do it with me? Um, I'll do it with me. you, baby. I'll fly into town and I'll do I go, it with you. i go with you. Let's do it. i go with you. Aww. I'm dead. I'm I'm dead serious. i go with you. Okay. Aww. When he said it right here on the podcast. I know. It's on video. When it gets I mean, I'm over. not. No, I you don't have to worry about me committing to that. Like I'll, I'll go. I mean, I do appreciate an active life. It's just all the other things that come with it. Like me, I have I have very bad reactions to mosquitoes, so I don't like being in environments where I'm gonna be bit by mosquitoes. Yeah, we gotta get you a little bu- right. little bubble suit. I don't want a bubble suit. You can't get yeah, I swell up. I get like oh, little weird. Yeah. mine like swell up too. Fill and up it's, with you know what's crazy? Um, so in Alaska, the mosquitoes are like big. They're not like the mosquitoes here they're still annoying and they still bite you but you can huge. see them coming but you can see them coming yes they're that win- those winterized mosquitoes they're so big and like why are you like literally one flew into my eye and i was just like what the this is like my whole eye oh. you didn't see you didn't see it <laughs> no i didn't because like no, when you're hiking, you. i'm talking to oh. the mosquito <laughs> oh right exactly yes that was it's a whole nother thing but kamikaze mosquitoes they, they, they were they got, huge. I've never seen mosquitoes <laughs> like that in my life. But the biggest thing is being prepared. So of yeah, course, we I think had that's the one thing. Donut. We had the bug spray. We had layers. So it's like those things that 
you're sometimes fearful of or it's keeping you outdoors if you're prepared nine times out of ten you can try to like you know it'll happen but maybe not as bad Mm -hmm. as you think you know what i mean like don't let that deter you from getting outdoors and trying something new so for you is it always when it comes to being outdoors or outdoorsy and correct me if i'm using the term wrong does it always have to be affiliated with an activity like can it be simply experiencing something that can classify you as outdoors like like for instance i've always wanted to see um the aurora borealis or also known as the northern lights is that considered being outdoorsy or is that just like you want to experience something that happens to be outside see i think that that is just something you want to experience being outside like obviously i feel like you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. The definition is in the eye of the beholder. Um, for me, outdoorsy just means doing an activity outdoors. Mm-hmm. Um, so, for instance, you could be a stargazer. That's outdoorsy. You know, you want to go see the lights. That's outdoorsy. But for me, it means actually doing an activity outdoors, camping, hiking, backpacking, rock climbing, you know. And even as outdoorsy as I am, doing like don't let this outdoorsy exterior fool you (laughs) like there's some things that i don't want to do like you know i'm like oh more power to you so you're not gonna you're not gonna like descend into a a volcano that may or may not be active hell no (laughs) (laughs) no and caving i have no desire to go caving it's the bats for me is the I'm a little claustrophobic, so it's the confined spaces. I, I could do a confined space. It's it's Mm-mm. the bats, like you know, when a bat touches you, you can get rabies or something. I've just watched too many movies. Um, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's movies that have really messed things up Batman, for me. Like Dark Knight, just all of those. You go into the woods, <laughs> and then some dude's been living in this cabin, and you know he you accidentally step on his property, and now he's hunting you with right. you know it's the, that's that's what really messes me Hollywood up. Hollywood is messed you up. It girl. has it has screwed me over. We which, didn't see any other people in Alaska. Yeah, until but like did they see you? See day that, eight, somebody was watching. That's just my perspective. <laughs> I've watched too many movies. There, we didn't have, see. Do listen. you watch Big Sky? like they're they i have i you know what's crazy it came out when i got back and i was like oh my gosh i need to watch this because i will see some alaskan sights like i was really one thing that i didn't get a chance to like chat about with people is the withdrawal from leaving alaska and it was only eight days but like my therapist was like oh it was kind of like an adrenaline high Mm -hmm. but like i had withdrawals when i got back like this life is so slow. I understand. Like, I finally understood, like, why people become nomads. Yeah. Like, I can't, but I get it. <laughs> I you get know, why like, you I do understand it. it. Right. Exactly. Um, maybe when I retire and, like, Patrick's off to college, that might be something I'd revisit. But, yeah, I totally get it. Like, wanting to wake up and see something like that every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's maybe not Alaska, because it's now the place where we were is fully covered with snow like inches and inches yeah. and inches yes yeah. so and maybe probably not and no sunlight too right yeah 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 they can keep that but it's dark but it's beautiful you know to look at it, but now I was shocked. Did, did you all specifically choose alaska or like were there other places other terrains so, you could have gone so it was chosen for us okay um we black women who kayak plus they are one of the partners of Knowles, which is a national outdoor. Oh my gosh, I just burned. National Outdoor Explorers League. No, it's L. <laughs> it's L. What is wrong with me? I really did draw a blank. Um. Anyway, Knowles is the outdoor wilderness school and leadership school. National Outdoor Leadership School. Man, that mommy brain. Anyway, um they were one of the partners and so bwwk was awarded one spot and the creator and founder of the group didn't want her member to go by herself which is how i won the raffle to go as the Mm. second spot 
And so Alaska backpacking was chosen for us. So there's a chance that we could have gone to another mountain range nearby because when we arrived, it was 18 women. And so nine went to one mountain and nine went to the Talkeetness, which uh. I was a part of. And so we had crappy weather. <laughs> And they, they were had great. great weather. They had great weather, <laughs> but one day we had crappy weather. But one day, and it's like, how does this add up? But okay. Um, but the women that I went with, it's amazing how you bond with someone after eight days, mm-hmm. and then also like an experience like that. Like absolutely, these women, I would go to bat for them. Like they were amazing. You know, um, I'll, there's no way I will forget them. <laughs> Like, and we're on a group, we have a group chat and then we have like a Zoom call Aww. once a month to kind of catch up. So, you know, again, that sisterhood, like that's been a theme in my outdoorsiness is making amazing connections to people. You know, like I used to complain, I don't have any friends that want to go outdoors with me. Now I have a bunch. I might have to travel, you know, to mm-hmm. see them, but I have them now, you know. So would you ever, I remember in, I think it was 12th grade, I read, uh, for AP English, I read this book about this guy who traveled the Appalachian Trail and um, just like all the ins and outs and bears and people who he saw and then like never saw again and doesn't know if they lived or died. Like, is that something, aside from like almost dying, um, is that something you would ever want to do? Like ever thought about like an actual mountain range? I don't know about the Appalachian just because I've heard some incredible stories. And then also, like, Mm -hmm. I have a four and a half year old, you know, like. It's been very hard for me to fulfill my outdoor quest because I am a mom Mm -hmm. and I do have a business and I do have responsibilities in this house, you know, Um like I saw um, they're doing an outdoor leadership scholarship for the BIPOC community, but it's three months. And it's like, oh, why didn't I do this when I was younger? You know, like I was probably the old auntie on the trip because I was like, do this, you know, like you guys want to get married and you want to have kids. And, and that's all great. Don't get me wrong. It's it's amazing but but do you now till you can't no more that's do you that is you know what i mean calming. like if i could go back and tell like i was like like you could just see it in their faces because some of them were getting engaged and preparing to get married i'm just like just <laughs> hold up <laughs> before you say i do mm. go out there and do everything you want to do because at some point there is going to be someone that you have to compromise with and, Mm -hmm. you know, consider. And then you have kids and it's even more from the moment you wake up, I got somebody to take care of. Yes. And while you can have a life and there are babysitters and grandparents and stuff at the same time, you're like, I can't just go off on a whim. You know what I mean? Like even me doing this eight day trip, people were looking at me like, well, how, well, where's Patrick going to go? And what's Patrick going to do? Mm-hmm. Because your Craig whole life do? is about them. Right. Like I, I, some it, people were just like, oh, you going for eight days? So all okay. of that. So did you ever feel selfish? Yes. Because the thing is, is that I didn't get to talk to him, nor Craig, nor my mom for eight days. I had no communication with them from the time I landed at Knowles. I packed up my, I said my goodbyes. I packed up my cell phone and I headed out and I did not get it back until eight days later. Oh, you didn't even have it on your person. I did not. Nope. They do that intentionally? Yes. Oh, this is some yes, Navy SEAL stuff right here. Yes, they do. Because I would have called my mama at that drainage. <laughs> The mama. Yes, they do. And then also, it's a policy because these classes are for all ages. So they have um, high school age that they take out, and they don't want the kids to call home. Right. 
But as a 35 year adult, year old adult, I get it because I would call my mama too. Mm-hmm. So like I get why they do it. The only thing I do regret is that I wish I would have been able to take my phone and put it on airplane mode because my pictures would have been way better than my GoPro. Oh, yeah. That's the only regret I have. But they, um, they should yeah. have just taken your SIM card. That would have. I know. It's right? not like I you would have had Wi-Fi. The pictures. You know what I mean? I just need the pictures. But yeah, I had to. I wrote in my rain journal every night before I went to bed. And yeah, I, I didn't get to talk to Patrick or Craig or my mom. Is a rain journal just like a waterproof journal? It is. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I didn't know if that was um, yeah. defaulted. I love that you said that to the the younger, you know, the younger ones. Since oh, yeah. you, you took on that auntie role, because it, it I, I think as great as wifehood and motherhood and all these, you know, hoods are. Um, they also do have a little ghetto ness to them. And sometimes Mm -hmm. just the way society is set up, we women are set up to, this is the goal. The goal is to get married. The goal is to have kids. And no one really takes the time to pour into us, to let us know, live. And, you know, I am very adamant. Like Solace has said, as a girl mom, Solace has said some things where she's just like, I'm going to get married. And, you know, she's also said, I'm not going to get married because I don't want to have to make. I think she said, like, I don't have to make decisions. I don't want to have to ask someone if I can do something. And I was like, yes, sis, I, I, I support <laughs> it you? because because I, I do get like how we just talked about, you know, feeling it selfish where right. you know if roles had been reversed and craig was in an organization and he was going somewhere for eight days no one would ever be like what oh what's gonna happen what with patrick and missy right. they'll be fine exactly. so right. i think i think it's very i have developed this new perspective on selfishness and i feel like selfishness is actually valuable and necessary mm-hmm. for a healthy life but i'm i'm that's something that makes me so glad that you still did it because you yeah. could have talked yourself out of it and i appreciate that you talked to these younger women and whether they take your advice or not at least you right. said it but it, yeah. it is important because once you once you sign that dotted line of of marriage and commitment like there's no more I'm just going to be a nomad and just live my life for me. You're living it in partnership with other people. It becomes, you know, you go from being a private corporation to a public corporation. And now, you know, every decision has to be met with a board. So, you know, I just love that you, you took that upon yourself. And I I love that you did did this. I love being able to, it was hard. Those eight days were hard on me too. Um, (laughs) I'm, I'm not your husband or your kid, but for eight days, I was just like, so she gonna post a picture like no, Mayday. May, yeah. And then you finally posted that picture where you were in like those baggy clothes after you lost like 16 pounds or something. Girl. And I was like, yes, Lord, she's alive. And she's it, well, yes. but right. I was, I was on pins and needles over here too. Like, um, Mayday. Is uh, she okay? Who, who who do I know in Alaska? Do I, anybody? Can I right. can I send somebody to check on my Listen. friend? So I am I'm glad you did it, and you know you. it's just been it, it's been great to watch, and I'm just ready to see what your next adventure is. Yes, thank you so much. No, yeah, it, like I said, the hardest part was not being able to communicate. You know, I, I missed I missed them, and you know, especially not being able to tell. Patrick good night, mm-hmm. you know, um, was very difficult. Um, but I knew he was in good hands. Yeah. And I also knew I needed it. Like next time I'll take a different type of vacation. But <laughs> do you consider that it. a vacation? No, I okay. do not. Okay. <laughs> no. I was I was curious. So that leads me to another in the grand scheme of things, like this was August, we're so, in December now. I'm sorry, I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut you off real quick. Um so this probably needs to be the last question because we're about 20 minutes over the hour oh, that we were man. supposed to be slotted for. Sorry. So I don't want to, okay. the, the conversation was organic. It was great. You guys have a nice yeah. little mom to mom thing going here. This little mom, mom powwow. And I'm just, I happen to be sitting in on, so it's great. I don't want to, I don't want to interrupt. I, I let it okay. roll, but we do yes. still have a back half of episode to record and okay. it's it's getting. It's, You're right. My bad. Do you want to ask the last question? No, I've commented. no, ask the question. I just want to, it to be the last question so okay. go go for it okay so you know we've touched on mom wife eight days of absence 
mm-hmm. as you look back on it, August, September, October, November, December, four months later, eight days in the grand scheme of things, I want to formulate this question properly. Those eight days that you weren't able to communicate, you weren't able to know what was happening, say goodnight, all of that, and everything you gained, how would you equate the value? It was immense. And also it was a blip in time, like eight days. That's what I, that's, that's essentially what I wanted to hear. That was nothing, you know. He, my, uh, Patrick, he had some tough moments Mm -hmm. because he couldn't get in touch with me. I did record him some videos and some stories and told him that, you know, but he's a very smart child and he knows that they weren't live. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, why she wearing the same hoodie? I can't FaceTime, you know. I can't FaceTime my mama, you know. Um, He, and he's, you know, he's a very emotional child, like, during the day he'll be like oh i miss daddy i miss grammy and lovey you know like he's an emotional child would i have done it maybe when he was a little bit older possibly but that eight days was like that sorry i have a follow-up but i know i'm not supposed to ask but i'm gonna ask anyway um how if you could say one way that this that experience made you better it made me realize that I do not have to subscribe to my fears and that I can pretty much overcome anything. Like I literally, now I might be dramatic, but there were times where I thought this might be it. And you look back at it now and you're like, wow, you got through that. Mm -hmm. You can get through anything. Like, I really did feel invincible after that trip. Like, the small stuff, the day-to-day stuff that I sweat, my anxiety, you know. It's like, no, look what you accomplished, look what you did. Look, at you did hard shit and you finished it. You know, that was like the biggest message to myself. You can overcome your fears and you can do hard shit, you know. Hard shit vibes. It's the first. This is the first time I've cussed on on the podcast. I think. No, it's absolutely not the first time. You've it's cussed. not. No, it's not. Oh, it's, it's like not the even, second time. It's I've... not even. Not even like close. Really? It's not I the first. I, okay, don't yeah. say it like I have a potty mouth. You're the one. Even Solace has been like, "Yeah, Daddy, you say bad words." So, um, so this is like the third time I've cussed, and it so is, it went to you. So, Missy, uh, we yeah. know we know where we can find you. But if somebody yes. wanted to connect with you online, where would they? Where can they find you at? So you can find me at Missy, M-I-S-S-Y-B-B-E, outside on Instagram. Missy, be outside. Missy, be outside. Sorry. Just you can find me in my adventures and adventuring with Patrick and all that good stuff. Cool. Well, we uh, we appreciate you taking some time out of your, your Sunday evening to uh, to chop it up with us and, and it's long overdue so we apologize for that no no I appreciate uh, but, being here but yeah we definitely wanted to make sure to have you on before we took a, another break so um, I'm sure it won't be the last time that you'll be on and I'm oh. sure you and Jessica will continue your uh, conversation that was sort of segueing into a relationship type thing which is why I had to, I had to put a stop to it because we were supposed to be oh, talking about it? outside <laughs> We talk about Missy being outside, outside not motherhood, not signing your life away when you get married. That's a different conversation. But that's part of the sisterhood. No, but listen, no, it's all it, it all factors. Your boy didn't want me to go the, on this trip at first, so sure I think that's I, important to the conversation. I wouldn't want my wife to go to Alaska and potentially slip down drainages either. I think that's a <laughs> completely normal husband reaction. Oh, I reaction. did slip potentially. I slipped. Yeah, I think that's a totally normal husband's reaction. Um, but I'm, I'm sure at some point he, you know, gave you his, his blessing or whatever, as, as I would have. She took her blessing. Well. Sometimes you got to take your blessing. Yeah. Well, that's, that's for y'all to, to <laughs> that's, that's y'all's, that's y'all's marriage. But, um, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> I, I take my blessing. Thank you, um, very much. Uh, we appreciate you. We love you. And we will see you next time. I Jessica, do want to say I'll let you. 2023 is the year that you We're gonna meet. and I will we will be in person in person 
breathing the yes. same air. I'm coming to Charlotte. It's going to be a long embrace. It's going to be a questionable embrace. Our husbands are probably going to look at each other like, what is going on here? David think he can't stand me now. Oh, it's a <laughs> bottomless it, mimosas. Wrap it up in a gift. Is I'm, really yes. not, I'm really not worried about it because I won't be here. So you can do whatever you need to do. <laughs> he's busy that day. He's, he's, oh, busy. Okay. he's busy that day. Yeah, I'll, I'll be out of town. Appreciate you guys. I'll be out of town. <laughs> no, but it has been an abs- absolute pleasure. I again, I thank you for the time for you know exposing our audience, the people out there, to what you're doing, and I hope that someone, multiple people, can see this and you know just have a spark ignited and be like, you know what, I can start small and start at a park and grow from there and find a community right. and you know find a different way to open up and and experience yeah. life and experience the world so hopefully this will sure. will do something for somebody where they can be like i i found a new way besides just mimosas and nightclubs and you know yeah. reading a book i i lived i got into the world that god created so i thank you for just exposing us to that we really no, really I appreciate, appreciate it. it and if any of your listeners have any questions on how to get started or any questions about gear or anything like that hit my dms hit my inbox i'm always willing to help that sounds like the like the cover track of a of a fire mixtape <laughs> all right so we're gonna, go, we're gonna go ahead and end this right <laughs> now um, what? Hit my thank, you, uh, yes. thank you missy we will uh we will talk to you later yes all right. thank you guys all right, Bye. And we'll, be, we'll be back after this break to finish up the episode Beep. all right so we're back after uh, a very lengthy conversation with Whatever. with Missy and she'd be outside so um, always a good time talking to uh, to Missy whether whether it's in our, our group chat that we have our couples group chat or if it's here on the podcast so I'm glad she was able to come on and and like let everybody know like hey you know we're out here in terms of black women black people um, there's um, you know, don't give in to the stereotypes, the stigmas, you know, black people are just as capable as everybody else. Um, and, and can be just as can, can be just as in their element outside of nature. If you allow yourself to, to immerse in it. So we in these trails, we in these trails, not only in the streets, we in these trails, we in these trails, and avenues, streets and trails. Streets if I started a group, that's what I call it. Streets and trails. Streets and trails. Trails and streets. Trails and streets. I like streets and trails. Streets and trails. It's better. It's like have mimosas and then go hiking. I don't think that that's safe. <laughs> that's why I was changing it to trails yeah, I don't, and streets. I don't, I don't think that's safe. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm, you do. You do brunch. Pretty, you okay? So you this okay? Peep this. You mountain trail. You pick. You pick your trail. At the bottom of the trail, you do brunch. So you get like a food truck. You get someone to cater brunch. You eat it at the bottom of the trail and then you walk off the mimosas on the trail. What if it's somebody like you who doesn't know how to not drink too many I mimosas? Mimosa as I do the trail. Yeah. You just got to know, you got to know your, your no, boundaries. It's, it's not, it's not safe. I think this is, this, y'all, this is it. I'm this pretty sure there's, there's some government agency there's that, not. that regulates there's not. programs Mm-mm. like that. Nope. Uh, and they would, they would shut it down before. Mm-mm. Before you had a chance to get it, get it off the ground. Tailgating? No, I can definitely be in trails with a so, mimosa. Um, as I said to everybody at the beginning of the episode when we brought Missy in, I'm, I'm a little congested, so this is why I sound... Congested? Congested. Um, for anyone who's not watching the, the YouTube. Everybody, everybody should be watching. Watch who, everybody you, who's you listening. Watch you know, I really... You know, it was so funny because um, I've always believed that comedy... Or uh, something that's funny. It's funny, like no matter what state it's in. Like whether you hear something that's funny or whether you see something, it's it should be, if it's funny, it should be funny. But like I'll watch, you know, our interactions, and there'll be some, some genuine um, exchanges that are just like legit funny. And there's so much that goes into it, like body language, like how I react, how you react, where I feel like it doesn't hit the same if I'm just listening to it. Mm-hmm. So absolutely, you should definitely be watching, uh, helping us grow our subscriber count because we're at 113 which means we gained like three i think in the last couple weeks so shout out to y'all when did we get over 100 because last i heard we went down a subscriber so i thought we we were at 99 we went from like 
110 to 109. When did anything. we get to 110? <sighs> See, Yo, look at. I'm look. glad that. And you know what's crazy? America. I don't watch it. Um, Jessica. No, she doesn't. Well, we. I watch and you listen. So I think that's well, good balance. I've decided I might not listen. Why? Because I get, I get upset with you. Oh. <laughs> I um, I feel like he's really not listening to what I'm saying. Anyways, um, <laughs> Jessica, like pulled me aside the like couple weeks ago and had like this whole like meeting she was like she was like yo we need to be serious about the podcast like we gotta be ultra serious where are you going with and this? you don't even you don't even be watching the and, do and, you, and you don't keep up and you don't even keep up with the subscribers when do i have time to watch it you got plenty of time so you got time when you watching Good Morning America and TJ's usually, replacement, you could be watching the and episodes. And I'm in like two meetings at the same time. You could still be watching the episodes. No, I just watch it to uh, assist with their viewage. Yeah, whatever. I'm trying what? to keep a black man on the air. Your views don't count. My views, someone. I'm, some, I'm, I'm well positioned to tell you whether or not your really? viewership counts. Do you have some kind of job that knows something <laughs> about I'm well positioned. Do you work in an industry that understands how no, ratings I work? Just, I just no, I just know that your views aren't being counted. Okay. Like that one time Loretta called you. For, for like, <laughs> my TV was off, but it was on ABC. <laughs> like Loretta, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Uh, no, but that was a um, that was a wonderful interview with Missy. Definitely yeah. inspiring. Um, there's like a small nature part of me. Uh, it's very small, but you know I've done things out in the outside, like Girl Scouts when we you know yeah. did s'mores was, and stuff was, like that. I was surprised. Um, and and I think usually when I'm in another country, I'm more open to being outside. Uh, I think well, like, that makes sense. An adventure bug just kind of bites. Comfort zone. Yeah. Your usual yeah, you're already outside, so it's like what like, why not feed this monkey this banana? Right. Um so it was, like, it was it was, that, was is that like a saying or is that something you actually did? I felt I fed, I fed a monkey. Oh, okay. I, it, I gotta, it was one of those creepy monkeys I was like, this thing might scratch my eyes out. Uh I think I actually held it. You held a monkey? Yeah, when I went to Panama. Oh, okay. I got video of it. Do when, you, we, when Shannon and I, I wrote that monkey dink. The only thing only thing I've seen is you jumping into the water to snorkel and then jumping back onto that the boat. That was the Dominican Republic. Oh, okay. And that was because I mixed up the locations. We had two destinations on that boat cruise. Oh. The first destination, which I thought was the second, was they said that there was a reef, a, like a part of the water yeah. that was only a few feet deep right. that came up to your waist. And you just jumped in. So I thought that's where I was jumping into. Yeah. That's not where I was jumping into. Was so it? when I jumped in. Then you didn't touch nothing And there was but nothing water. at the bottom. Yeah. Um, I felt like Peter. Yeah. And I was like, uh, Jesus, I'm not walking right on this water. It was so very, I, it was a very, it was a very swift turnaround I, that you I that you am made. Thankful that video has not resurfaced in oh, in like four years. It will. It's been it's been several years since I, that video. Well, I know the I know the the sole owner of it, so you I do, should just hit him up but, and be like, Yo, I need that video. It was it, it. There was a, a time on Facebook that it frequently recycled yeah. itself. Uh, people who I didn't even know, like I think Dab commented on it. Like people were it was losing funny. it. I didn't even think you really noticed that how quickly I got out of the oh, water. It was, it was quick. <laughs> it was swift. I had a kid to come home to, a kid and a husband to come home to. Yeah. Um, but yes, I I do I do have an adventurous side of me, but it's just like everything has to. I just have to be inspired. Um, sure. But I do appreciate nature. But I don't know that I would go go to Alaska. I don't. But I'm also not equipped for it. I think if you are an avid hiker and it's something that you do, then it's like you know what? Let's let's try this. Um, right now, just you know, I think Crowder's Mountain would probably be safe. A walk through, you know, our own trail, which creeps <laughs> which, me out. Which I've done with Solace once. Oh, you guys went through there. Picked her up from the bus stop. We walked it. Oh, it it makes me uncomfortable. I think because I feel like someone could snatch her. Uh, That's why I didn't like the bus stop because I felt like someone could snatch her and take her in there. Morbid, I know. Um, I mean, it's just something you have to think about. Yeah, unfortunately, parent. when you have kids, yeah. human trafficking is real. It is. Um, yeah, the trail was it was cool. It was. It just looks very green. So I think I feel like snakes would be in there. I mean, I'm sure there are. But we didn't. We didn't see any. Is it long? Is it? Is it? It's a couple miles. I would say it's a couple miles. Really? From, or, or a mile from start from to here? from the point where the trail starts. So okay. it starts by the pond. You walk around and then you come up on the other end of uh, I guess what is that ringtail? I'm giving street names away, but it, oh. it 
brings you up to the road that intersects with the end of our road. That we oh, live on. I thought it it started right here. Where the the trail? Yeah. No, the, not the not the trail that takes you to the pond. It doesn't start right. Oh, here. okay. I haven't gone there, so we'll have to do it. Um, come yeah, springtime. It's it straight. But uh, one thing that I did want to that she it kind of came up organically. It was a topic I wanted us to talk about anyway. But you know, just her talking about just the release and you know with the pandemic and everything that kind of pushed her. I know um, this was something that was heavy on my heart this past week. Um, Twitch. Mm -hmm. who um, I, I have admired for years uh, in the, in the dance world. Um, took, unfortunately took his life uh, last week and it was something that hit me hard. Cause uh, I don't know. I've never really like, I don't really dive into like my passion for dance. Like I did dance growing up. I've done tap, hip hop, jazz, lyrical, ballet. Um, I, there was a season I wanted to be a dancer, but it was just, you know, a dancer is not a doctor, a lawyer or an engineer. Like can, what kind of money can you make being a dancer? And I remember being a teenager. Depending upon what kind of dancer you want to be, you can make a lot of money. I, facts. Yeah. Um, I remember, being a teenager and not really seeing a lot of dancers who looked like me. Right. And when So You Think You Can Dance came out, Twitch, I adored that show, but I that's my first introduction to Twitch. I And I've known him ever since. And I just had such an infatuation and a love for his ability to perform. And, yeah. you know, when he just kind of got more reputable in not just the dance world, but the mainstream world. And then of course he, he, you know, people refer to him as Ellen's DJ, but he was way more than that. Um, he was, right. he's, he's a performer. And so I, I feel like I've watched him grow up professionally yeah. and really kind of change the narrative as to what a dancer can do. It's not just music videos. It's not just, you know, ballet. There's so much more. So I was really, really hurt by it. Um, and just like, the overall scheme of it, just he's a husband. He had three kids. You know, I watched videos of him through the pandemic. You know, they were talking about potentially having a third kid and people are in this space where they're trying to speculate why he did it and what's going on. And I don't, I don't know that that's the right approach. Um, for me, it kind of comes off as insensitive. Like his family's already trying to deal with this, his poor wife. And now people are trying to deduce as to why he made this decision. And so there's that, but something I've seen a lot is everyone saying, you know, check on your strong friends and do this. And, you know, you know, you'll have people who will say, Oh, if I had just reached out, or if I just said hi, or if I just, and I've always had issue with that. Um, when someone makes a choice to end their life, because I think it, it kind of takes a narcissistic approach in my perspective where, you know, people seem to think that if they had, you know, simply text someone high or, or whatever, it would, it could have changed the trajectory. And I'm not saying it, it wouldn't have or couldn't have, but I think it also applies this pressure on people. And, you know, a lot of, a lot that I've seen since he died is, you know, the picture of um, Miss America, um, Chesley, the picture of Robin, picture of Robin Williams, Tony Bourdain. Um, there was someone else, um, but and then also Twitch. And, you know, they got these big smiles and there are people who were pouring into people's lives and bringing joy. And a lot of. Unfortunately, a lot of people who do take their lives don't present themselves in a place where you would question their mental state, their happiness. So, and even if you did press, those people have learned how to present themselves. And I think a lot of times people carry this guilt of if I had reached out, if I had called, if I had texted, maybe, maybe, maybe. But I think what we forget is, and I, I don't, I'm not trying to sound insensitive or speak out of turn, when people decide that this is their option, this is, this is the best scenario for them. Um, unfortunately, 
in my opinion, in my experience, there's no, there's typically no talking them out. There's typically no, nothing you as an individual can say to change their mind from making this decision. And I say this because, you know, I I have a really good friend that I, I love with all my heart who attempted this and, um, by God's grace was unsuccessful. And I'm so thankful, but I think about how they presented themselves and even the day that they tried, um, looking at their Snapchat, looking at their Instagram, they were out, they were partying, they were having a good time. There's nothing that would have triggered your mind to say, this person needs help. This, let me, let me. And, and I won't even lie. I had for maybe a week or two, I had the inkling of like her, her name kept popping in my head, like reach out, text them, whatever. And you know, just the busyness of life. I didn't. And I went through a moment where I started to be like, Oh, if I had just, you know, followed that and let it, but we don't necessarily live in a society where we actually save people who need to be saved if that makes sense. And, and it probably doesn't. So I think there's just this unnecessary burden. A lot of people are putting on themselves that they could have saved someone's life. And I don't know that that's always the case. I think, you know, unfortunately when someone gets to that point, they're, they're already there. They're already too far gone. Um, so, you know, I feel for his family. I hurt for his family. I hurt for his wife. You know, they have three kids. I, I, I can't imagine one of them is like two, um, two or three, like a small child. Um, and it, it hurts me to think that, you know, someone could be in a situation where that was the only way they felt things could work out. But, you know, I also think that people are just not being respectful and trying to speculate as to why and figure out, you know, I've heard rumors, it's finances, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, none of that matters. Like someone was in an unfortunate situation where they felt the only way out was to end their life and leave behind hundreds of thousands of people who looked at them with admiration close people who loved and cared about them. So that was just something that's been bothering me and that's been sitting on me very heavy um, throughout this week. So I did want to touch on that and Missy kind of approached um, just like doing stuff, finding something that is for you and can truly relax you and truly bring you joy and happiness. And I think that's really important with the type of society and life we live, we, we get busy with everything that all of our responsibilities that we forget to be happy. And then, you know, by the time you realize you're not happy, it might be too late. So that's just something that I wanted to, to press, press on, excuse me. Um, yeah, I didn't. Um, I didn't know that's the, that's the way we were gonna go, but um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I agree with everything. Everything you said. It is. It is tragic. In the case of Twitch, um, although not uncommon mm-hmm. uh, for people to speculate and question and wonder mm-hmm. why, uh, especially when yes, you're dealing, when you're dealing with celebrities. It's just we're just naturally inquisitive. Um, <clears throat> And especially when it's it's someone who seems like that shouldn't have been their end, uh, I think it it drives the curiosity up even more. Uh, but yeah, I've seen some of the things out there on social media, and it's kind of like, uh, you know, it's not really. Uh, I don't know that's ever a good time, but you know, it just it just seems like the moment we get news of a celebrity passing and it passing in this way, that it's always this like within the hours it's like this conspiracy mm-hmm. theories start start popping up and and people you know start positing and, and theorizing and it's just kind of something you get you kind of get used to but it still doesn't i don't know that it makes it any more right um uh you said something like and i, I don't want to just disagree for the sake of disagreeing but i think 
I think we can. Um, I think there are, even though there are people who have their minds made up uh, when, when they decide that they want to take their own life, I think, I think we can have impact and I think we can prevent people, but by just kind of being there, like how many times have you ever um, like gone out with somebody or called somebody up and y'all, y'all hung up or y'all just talked. Right. And then like, a day later or the next morning you get a message from them like hey I really needed that I really appreciated mm-hmm. that I mean you never know like if that conversation if that out of the blue phone call if that experience you guys had when you were hanging out drinking mimosas doing whatever you know if that was the day or the moment or the time frame in which you know someone was going to do something or if they had been you know thinking about it but maybe something you guys talked about maybe, maybe um, you know convince them not to so um, I think, you know, you never know. I mean, we'll never know mm-hmm. the, uh, the we as people who may be impacting others will never know unless they tell us. But, um, you know, I, I think people can be um, saved. It's just, I don't know. It's just, you never know. I, I, but I think it's, it's normal when, when people pass. It's just like that natural guilt. And it is very narcissistic. Um, but I think it's like a, if it's like a good narcissist. I don't know if that's, that's a, such a thing, but you know, it's, it's, it's just crappy. It's just, it just sucks. I, I wasn't as familiar with Twitch. The mm. dancing isn't really my, my space. Um, and nor, nor is Ellen, but, um, I, I saw the outpouring of like sadness and, you know, uh, appreciation and stuff. So, um, I know a lot of people were, I know that hurt a lot of, a lot of people, obviously his family included, or his family most, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's tough. You know, when you think about everything, anyone who's alive has been through over the last couple of years, you know, you, you just, it's tough. So you know, people need to make sure they're taking care of themselves. Um, you know, therapy and um you know that we obviously have the suicide prevention hotline you know 988 that people can can call Mm -hmm. if they feel um if they're having those thoughts and they feel like they want to take action on i would encourage everyone obviously to to please call that number if you ever find yourself in this situation um but yeah it's never never easy thing i mean death itself is, Mm -mm. is tough but um you know suicide is always it always it always hits a little differently. Absolutely. Um. So, try to pivot from that. Um. I think we'll just go right into uh, to the main the main topic, seeing as we're at press for time. But um, Michelle Obama. Shelly O. Um, it's making waves lately like the moon uh and you know it's michelle so she can make waves if she mm-hmm. wants to that's right her, that's, that's our, her civic duty yes that's her, that's her civic duty but please tell us why why michelle obama's been making waves specifically for married folk so from my algorithm she is making waves specifically because people are starting to realize based off of what she's saying that she was the sacrificer. Um, and, you know, that's you know black women, Twitter, Instagram that I'm following, but also that marriage is unhappy. <laughs> and I think I knew it was serious when Meghan McCain tweeted that Michelle Obama is probably the only person giving the real advice about this life. And now y'all know how I feel about Meghan McCain. Um, Appreciated her dad. She and I are just, uh, this is the first time I referenced her, I think since like at least a month after she left the view. So um, she's just not in my purview or my radar, but she was trending recently. But Michelle Obama has really said some things that have gotten people like, well, why the hell do I want to get married? Um, and I think this is good. 
a lot of people might say it's bad, but I think it's actually good because it's really time to shift the narrative of marriage, especially for young women. Uh, I think, and you know, we kind of touched on it with Missy, but there are just stages in life that you're told to approach. You know, you graduate high school, you go to college, you graduate college, you get a job, you find a man and you marry him and then you have his babies and life will be good. But there's so much in the in-between that isn't addressed with marriage that until you're in marriage, you're like, wow, this, this is work. And I read Becoming and some of it did like, it did hit me where you realize like, you know, they got married and Barack took a, what's that called? The word siesta has come to my head. Sabbatical. Sabbatical to finish his book after they got married and just kind of left her. Um, and it low-key kind of makes you look at Barack with a side eye like, bruh, this lady has done a lot. We just interviewed somebody who went to Alaska for eight days and couldn't communicate with her family. Yeah. But that's that's absolutely so. the eight days. I'm just saying, Barack I mean, went away the, for like four months. I mean, I understand to but, Bali but, after they got married. But I'm just saying they were newlyweds. I get it. And Do I'm not you? Say, I'm not saying I wouldn't have done the same thing. You just compared it to eight days. No, I'm saying it's but it, it's it's a mentality, right? It's like, hey, I need this. This is important. I need to go through this. Now there's a big gap between eight and four months, but the mentality is still the same, right? Like, who's to say that eight day stretch wasn't didn't seem like uh, an eternity for her husband, for her son. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't know what that was like for them because we're not, we're not we, them. We don't. So I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not saying that that's not tough for any spouse uh, to, to go through, especially like four months, right off the rip, we got married. But I, in reference to looking at Barack differently, I just wanted to add, as I, as I normally do, I just want to add context. Like, Cause you always have to defend the man. No, it's not, it's not even about that. It's just, well, one, you're attacking a man. So, I mean, how often do you get up here and, and, and attack women? But not I'll, even, I'll not, come for a woman if not, I and, I'll, and I'll come for a man. So neither here nor there. What I'm saying is, is that if someone, if something is of a serious importance to someone, mm-hmm. um, and they go, they have to go away or they have to pursue it or they have to complete it. Um, I don't know that, uh, I, I think it's, I think they're, they're similar circumstances, right? And I think that it's, it's tough on the spouse. It was tough on Missy's husband. It was tough on Missy's son. Mm-hmm. But Missy, knowing, like acknowledging all of that, still said, I needed to do it. Mm-hmm. Like I needed to be, I needed to go through that experience. I think one thing that and you're not... And um, I think uh, Barack probably felt same without knowing too much about that story. So maybe I shouldn't be speaking at all. But mm-hmm. um, I know that book was really important in terms of Barack Obama um, getting the notoriety, uh, wide scale notoriety that he got. I know it was really important. So not to say if the book isn't written, if he doesn't go on the sabbatical to finish the book, he doesn't become the Barack Obama we know. But who's to say? I know. I just know the book was really important. <laughs> And as I was going to say, um, a lot of times when a man makes a certain, has to make a certain decision, it's seemed as a necessary sacrifice. But when a woman, I always like to flip, flip it. If, a, if Michelle was in a situation where she needed to, be away from her husband as a newlywed for for four months, the judgment would have been significantly different. Just like Missy even touched on in our piece with her eight days and everyone, well, what's going to happen to Patrick? What's going to happen to Craig? Uh, Patrick got a daddy. Patrick Craig is a whole uh, adult person. Like they're like, she is going to make sure that these people are in situations where they're taken care of. But when, when women have to make certain decisions for themselves, they are seen as selfish because, you know, all of, because, and I think it really boils down to the response, certain responsibilities are seen as only for a woman. And there are just certain sacrifices as a woman, if you choose to get married, that you're supposed to make. And if you deviate from that course, 
there's something wrong with you. There's something selfish. And I, I, Michelle has, from what I take away, Michelle didn't need to be married to the first black president. That wasn't her desire. Michelle does a lot to support her husband, you know, and if you read her book, you realize that she, for us, for a long period of time, she was a single mother. She gave up her career to support her husband's pursuit to the office, the Oval Office. This is not something she signed. Like Michelle Obama was training Barack. Like she is a significant powerhouse. She was a significant powerhouse in the Chicago legal world. So you have this woman who has upended her life, had to leave a job that she worked really hard to get for a job that paid less um, so that she could be a good mother and a good wife while her husband was pursuing the things that he wanted. And she's currently in an amazing season and I am so happy for her, but all of the, I, I wonder if all of this is coming out now because she has the time and she can vocalize that she didn't want any of this. And, you know, she, you know, she said the most recent interview, I think she did it on revolt. Um, she was talking about, you know, I guess they've been together 30 years and she was like, I didn't like it for a good 10 years. And I listened to that segment and I was like, sis, you were preach like cash app, Venmo, PayPal. What, what virtual offering bowl can I submit to? Because, and every woman that was on that stage related because she was saying things that I have felt. She was saying, you know, they got these two kids and he's going to play golf. And she was like, you have time to play golf because I don't have time to do stuff. So she, I think she's really, whether people like it or not, I think she's really putting a spotlight on the fact that, and you know, I, this is the opinion that I, I appeal to that in relationship, in traditional marriage, women really have to bear a lot more than they're prepared for. And I don't know that that's fair. I mean, I've always known it's not fair. I think someone finally speaking on it, you know, makes you recognize, you know, she's in her fifties and she's finally now kind of having her moment. You know, she was maybe in her twenties having her moment when, before she and Barack got together. And then once she got married, like it literally, like from what she's putting out there, it's like the moment she got married until about now, her life has been about her husband and her children and making sure that these people get to where they want to be. And it, 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 it's very, you're not a woman. You're never going to be a woman. You're, so you're never truly going to understand it. You can sympathize. You can try to say you see it from my perspective, but you never will because that's not, those aren't shoes that you have to fill. So, you know, I, I definitely agree with people who are like, she's not making marriage look appealing, but she's also letting you know that if this is something you're going to do, you're working hard. You're, you're, you're going to have moments where you're not happy. You're going to have moments where your partner's not going to do for you what you need. Um, and vice versa. But I think one thing that I had seen a lot of was, just women questioning why the sacrifices have to be from the woman. Why did like, we don't know all the things Michelle wanted to do, what she wanted to be um, aside from the fact that she wanted to be a successful attorney. Cause that's what she was. But the appeal of marriage is being lost in all of this because you see that one, they're regular people. But two, her life and her life's journey has been connected to someone else and what someone else achieved. So that's, that's top line, the thing that I've taken away from a lot of this. I do plan on reading this book um, that she's put out. I've just, you know, busyness of life. I haven't really, my reading has not been where I wanted it to be. Um, but I've like, even with reading becoming, I, I felt for her where I was just like, I could not imagine 
You know, my husband is in the state capital for five days a week and, you know, he's only home on weekends and I'm the one who's jug- running back and forth and doing my job and getting the kids where they need to be and all of that. So uh, it, it, she's definitely creating waves. She's definitely getting people to be like, uh, Barack, ooh, we're not saying you're a bad guy, but dang, what about Michelle? And this is the part where you nullify everything I say. Well, I guess that's where we are. It's a good thing we're getting ready to take a break soon. It's just, just, just negative vibes all up and through here. Like we can't ever agree on something. Um, and I might surprise you, but I'm actually really, really excited that uh, the revolt clip that you mentioned is what I saw. Uh, and it's, it's only thing that I've seen so it was like a minute 45 snippet of a, what I would assume is a much longer interview oh I saw like the six minute clip okay so where she was talking about marriage and she was like I know people are gonna think I'm, I'm being catty but I don't you know didn't like my husband because there you talk about I meant like she mentioned the golf thing like if you're just married you know without kids it's like oh okay but like wait a minute we got these two kids here so like like what are you doing like where are you going what do you mean you're doing something for yourself so, um, <clears throat> definitely anyone who's been married long enough is with kids. I mean, that's not, that's not a foreign, um, situation to them, but I'm just really excited that she said this. I'm happy that she said this because it opens up the conversation about marriage. Um, and to use some of your, uh, tactics and some of your, um, some of your uh, maneuvers. You're making if a man very if a man had said this, we I know the woman would be coming for his neck. I know the woman would a be coming. I, I know the, the woman. To I say know this. the woman would be coming for his neck. I know this is a bit of a double standard with this, but that's okay. But that's okay because the conversation is happening. Right, which is what's really important that a more accurate, less fairy tale ish um, a story of marriage is being told by someone who's really notable and people, the, someone who people really respect. Uh, so, like you said, if people, if Michelle Obama is saying this about marriage, like, oh my God, like, is this something I really want to do? Is this something I want to rush into? Is this something I want to make sure I'm a little bit more prepared for? Because all these sacrifices she had to make, these are compromises I may or may not have to make. These are conversations I may or may not have to have. Um, if I'm marrying a certain type of person with certain aspirations and politics, these are things I have to consider. My God, like, that's a lot. If Michelle Obama went through this and nearly broke or nearly didn't like had moments where she was like, I don't want to do this no more. You think about, you said she didn't really want any of it. Like who wouldn't want to be the like first lady? You're, yeah, you're, absolutely not you're like the first lady. Okay. So there's two people, but you're like the, you're in the white house. You're like the most like second or third most important person in the country. And the most scrutinized person. Well, I mean, that comes with any sort of success is scrutiny. So if you want to be, and, and then that's just like in any field and whatever, like especially politics. But I guess she didn't want any of it. Like, oh my gosh. Like, and just the success, like you individually, collectively with your partner, like any success you may have, like in, in when, what you do with your careers, like that can't always mask everything else, like in terms of your relationship. So I'm glad that she's saying all this. Um, because again, I feel like if a man came out and said this, it would be a totally different reception. A man couldn't so, have said what she said. Sure, you think men don't? You think men don't have issues with their wives? You think men think aren't? Men are, aren't don't get issues. fed up with their wives. You don't think there aren't men who sack? Listen, instead of thinking of what you want to say to respond, because I see, I know how you look when you're not actually listening, and you're just I'm letting me finish. I'm always listening. So you think that like a man? There aren't men who have to sacrifice. In marriage, who men who haven't sacrificed their careers, there aren't men who have had to bear the responsibility of things at home, like to women. Like, you don't think a man has ever not liked his wife for an extended period of time? You don't think men I, get frustrated I'm, with the wife? So, a man absolutely could have said everything Michelle said, but it would have been received differently. And your 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 reluctance to accept the fact that a man can say it is kind of essentially proving my point because when it comes to marriage 
um, there are and with relationships, heterosexual relationships, there, I think it's just been pretty well established. There's certain things that it's OK for women to say and men not to say, which is fine. Right. Which is cool. I used to try to want to fight those battles, but I just kind of I, I I don't do that anymore. I just keep to myself. So I think as long as the true message of marriage is getting out there, right, that it's work, it's grit. You got to scrape your knees. You're going to have moments where stretches, not moments, stretches where you're not going to be your spouse isn't going to be your favorite person in the world. They might not even make the list stretches. Right. Um, it's about growth and change. And we've talked about this several different times on the podcast. Uh, maybe not like the subject matter, but kind of, kind of around it on the, on the margins. Um, like when you throw kids into it, right? Like it's not, it's not only just, it's not only like compromise about, well, where are we going to live? Like, Oh, I want this kind of house. I want that kind of house. Well, I want to take this job, but it has me out of the house, you know, this percentage of time. Like those are just normal things that are just a married couple would have to a sing like a married couple without kids would have to go through. But when you throw kids into it, like it becomes even more convoluted and, 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 and tough. So it's, I mean, yeah. So I'm, I'm glad someone as popular and as respected and as esteemed as Michelle Obama is having like a realistic conversation about marriage because it gets, it gets out there better, more it's, it, it, uh, what's the word? It um gets kind of embedded in the culture better than it would if it was just you know just some random person saying it. So I think it's great. I got no complaints. Um, I think you know it's always great when someone is is candid and they give you insight into what you know their personal lives has been like and their struggles and their and their thoughts and the things that she had to sacrifice. It's like yo, that's crazy. Like you know, like I I. For, you know, more recently have been the main one responsible for getting the kids to school and picking them up from school and getting them home because of your, your work schedule. Um, and I just got like a little, you know, <laughs> a little, little mid-level manager job. I can't imagine being like an attorney or like, you know, trying to get into that business and then having to juggle. Cause that's just like, I think law. And I think like you never sleep because it's just, it's just go, go, go. There's always, there's always like an emergency. Um, and then having to juggle the girls, like it's, it's crazy. And, you know, I would love to know why maybe she, maybe she covers this, which is why I think I want to read the book as well. Becoming first. And then this next one, um, why she saw it through early on. Cause that's, I mean, if you, if you think about it, if you're more susceptible to just like, okay, like this is what I thought it was going to be. I feel like it's going to be within that first few years. Cause look at the, the marriage and divorce statistics. So I'd be curious to know, like what did she see or, um, what was it about their relationship or their current situation where she like saw it through and, you know, maybe it's not a straightforward answer, but, um, cause that's, that's tough. Like you and I get married and you're like, yo, I got to bounce for like four months. Like, like, wait, what? <laughs> like, we just, we don't even got the we don't even got the marriage like certificate. It's not even here yet. Like, what do you mean you got to leave? So I don't know. It's crazy. Uh, props to Michelle. Uh, I've always been a big fan, um, and uh, especially all the stuff she had to endure while she was first lady, and you know, just the way people attacked her and whatnot. Um, but just when you talk about accomplishments, I mean, like you said, she stands alone she stands on her own separate from uh her husband and his you know his accomplishments so and when you get somebody like that who's who's spitting like real facts real game about marriage i'm all for it i think it's great and i think a, a more grounded realistic uh depiction of what marriage most likely will be for people who are in it for the long haul um is needed because we got a high divorce rate in the country. So you got people jumping in and they may not be thinking about all of the things that she's discussing. You don't think long-term. Um, so I think, I think it's good. I'm, I'm happy she did it. I have to go find the six minute clip now since I only saw the, the minute 45. <laughs> Any 
anything? No? Oh, that's not good. Um, <laughs> why, why is that not good? Because <laughs> you're never, you never. I just feel like you're going to refute everything I say. So it's just no, not. I mean, so one thing, and this is separate from this topic. It's okay for us to disagree. I know, right? and but it's sometimes okay. we disagree, but you, I, I, I frequently feel like you're not actually taking the time to hear And what if I told my you, perspective. what if I told you I feel the exact same way? I'd tell you you're lying. <laughs> See? <laughs> but it's okay, right? Because like, I, I listen to okay. hear and understand. Okay. And, I, and so do I. I just don't, I just don't agree sometimes. No. You listen. And that's, and that's, you listen to correct. And that's fine. That's that's to, that's totally fine. But we can disagree and it'd be okay. I just I, I I have to stand firm that a man would not say what she said. Um and I, th- I think that it's because and you know, I know we're in a very interesting gender sensitive society, but if you know, we're just at the nuts and bolt male, female, um, mother, father there are just certain things that are heavier on a woman as a mother. Now, not all women, they not, I think, you know, it's a misconception that all women are maternal. All women are not maternal. Um, there are se- se- many women who are just built to, you know, yes, they may have had a kid, adopted a kid, whatever way of which they acquired a kid, but it's not in them to put their kids first. Um, I think that when it comes to fatherhood, and again, this is just from my perspective as being a child and now being a wife to a father, but not um, a father, but not a father, which is why I'm clarifying. Um, There are, and I can only speak from a mother who is, who's born my children born. So like I gave, I carried and gave birth. Um, but I think, you know, there's just from those of us who have the maternal instinct, it doesn't matter how you acquire your children. It's going to turn on. Um, motherhood is a burden that I don't think is addressed. I think fathers, and I'm going to say this politically incorrectly, but I'm, I just can't think of the right words to articulate it. There's a way fathers can detach and their detachment can be justified as this is for the betterment of the family. I'm the head of the household I need to provide. So these are the sacrifices that I need to make. And sometimes it can be being present. It can be, you know, I don't make it to this event or what, whatever, whatever it may be. It doesn't mean that you don't feel any feelings towards the fact that you're not able to be or offer certain things, but it's just, there's a certain justification that I think fathers can give. I think mothers carry a burden of, we're the builder with the, the way of which we support the family, I think weighs on us differently. I think, yes, head of household is, is, is a heavy crown to bear, but the person that ha- like as a mom you have to carry the balance of being supportive being nurturing being disciplinary and not saying that fathers don't do all of this but it's different like you know as a mom you're the safe haven like when dad doesn't agree to something or when dad says no or when dad's mean you you need to be it's an instinct of of that's why it's mama bear you never really hear papa bear as a reference it's mama bear who's protecting her cubs it's the the mama lion the you know the whatever it's it's mama because there's something about the way a mother carries the 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 structure of a family i think is very different than how a father like it's more internal whereas father is above fathers have to see the big picture they have to see the grand scheme of things they have to see you know further into the future whereas moms have to to carry a load right in it now and i i I don't feel like i'm explaining it well um but i'm just saying how it is so you know and i can't remember exactly everything she said but i relate there are times where you will ask or say you're going to do something or say you want to do something and in my mind i'm like wow 
this Negro has some audacity. Like in the midst of all this chaos, you want to do something for you? Like in this particular moment when there's dishes that need to be loaded in the dishwasher, there's, you know, clothes that need to be washed. There's people that need to be bathed. There's, you know, bottles that need to be warmed. There's floors that need to be toilets that need to be all of the, 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 the big multitude of our lives. In this moment, you're able to think, I want to do this for me. And, and I think part of it can be resentment. Um, because I don't always feel that I'm warranted that. You know, when I do go on a vacation, I feel guilty. Um, when I do go out on a girls' night or I do go to a brunch, I feel guilty. And then I also feel like, oh, I need to balance it out and make sure that you get something for you. Um, like people are always like, oh, I need to be like you. You know, you do momming and wifing and you still do stuff for you. I don't because in, in the moment when I'm doing something for me, I'm thinking of all the things that I sh could be doing. I'm thinking of all the things I should be doing. I'm thinking of all the ways people are probably judging me because I'm out here in these streets when I should be on my street, in my house, doing something. Um, so I, I don't think, I think one thing dads are good at is doing stuff for them. It, and, and, and yeah. Okay. I think, I think, and, and and I don't say that as an insult. It's a compliment that you that mo a lot of men recognize that I need to do X Y Z to keep my peace to to you know to to zen all of the things to get that tranquility. And I don't think moms do that enough. You know, when we do something, when we go out as a group, it's our kids still loom. Like the last time I did a girls' night, we were dealing with drama that one of the moms was dealing with pertaining to her kid and her kid's dad like there, there there's no true like you even made a joke we did karaoke and we were singing we don't talk about bruno and you commented on my post about how like you finally get away from the kids and you're still you know singing a song about the kids that was a joke because bruno's a bop I it listen, is a bop I and bruno. when i tell you in that karaoke room we killed it but Sure we spent most of the time talking about our kids. Um, and so, you know, mom guilt is real. When, when you do something that's supposed to be for you, you feel guilty because, you know, you're supposed to, like, I went away for work and I came back and these kids were like, mommy, we missed you. Blah, blah, blah. I was, you thought they would, you thought they I were was tortured. not gone for a full 24 hours. You thought. They were starved. I was not gone for a full 24 Whipped. hours. And these kids were like, we made you signs that said we missed you. We loved you. I mean, I felt special, but like, that's a heavy burden to bear that uh, to feel like you can't relinquish your duties. And I feel like dads are able to relinquish. So I don't feel like a man could have. Yes. I feel like if a man said it, he would have been chewed up, but, um, <coughs> Michelle is being chewed up, but I don't think that. I don't think to the level that a man would have oh, been. Oh no, no. Um, I'm glad we I can won't agree dispute on that. that. But I don't. I don't. I don't think Progress. that. Um, agree. I don't think that a man can fully say it because, like, when it comes to like your previous position or two positions ago when you traveled two for work. Positions. I can't remember. Um, oh, work positions. Okay. What? I thought you meant like argument positions. Uh, like, when you traveled remember. for work. Like that was a lot. It was. And you know, it started off with just one kid. So me, yeah. you know, getting her to daycare, getting her home, getting her to dance. You were gone three weeks out of a month. Three you days, home. three days every the week, three, three yeah. days out of the week. Yeah. Um, but you know, Monday was usually your travel day, travel day. And then you get home either late Thursday or early Friday. Yeah. So, you know, we had, fr we had Friday night, to Monday morning with you. Yeah. And so, you know, I did feel like a single mom. And then you added, I was pregnant with Savi, Savi. Um, towards the end of it because you did it you for almost dog. two years. We got a dog. So it was like, this is a lot. This is not what I signed up for. But yeah. I wanted 
you to advance this is where you wanted to be and granted you were in a place where you're like i'm missing dance i'm missing you know when she got her award ceremony at dance you're Mm -hmm. you you just you know the cute things that she was doing she was growing up and you felt like you just weren't part of it well i i i don't want to um for the sake of you making your point i don't want to downplay that because that was and i'm not saying you are but i want to make sure that i speak for what that was like for me because mm-hmm. that was actually that was extremely tough mm-hmm. um and it was the reason why i changed positions when i had the opportunity yeah. to so that i could be home more because i didn't want to be the dad who work always kept him away like daddy wasn't here because oh he's working like oh daddy's working like my dad worked a really important job um but was involved in everything like took us to practice cooked his dinner like he was, I mean, he wasn't really all that involved when it came to like schoolwork and stuff, but, um, you know, like the, like the important stuff, the stuff that you want to look and see your parents there, if you're involved in something like he was there. Um, and I never wanted to be opposite of that. Like mm-hmm. that was my example. So that's what I wanted to be. So that it killed me for two years or a year and whatever that I was away. Um, and it was, it was not easy. It wasn't just like, Oh man, I miss how this thing. It was like, nah, like, Yo, I'm missing my baby's first whatever, like whatever it was. Like I'm I'm not there. And because I'm I'm out here working. Um and that was that was tough. So not saying that you weren't you were trying to like say I didn't really care. Mm-hmm. But I just want for myself, I just wanted to put that out there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I, I never doubted that. Um, which is why you changed, but there that was and I think at the time, aside from being pregnant, I was also in school and all of that. But it was we've never we've never not been doing a lot. <laughs> yeah, we're, that's just who we are. We do a lot. Yeah. And I can't wait for the season where all of the a lot we've done, we can reap getting yeah. a lot without having to do a lot. Right. So it was it was a lot. It, it was heavy. It was mornings where I was tired and did not want to get out of bed, but it was me and it had to be me. Um, and so I, but I went through it because I wanted that advancement for you. I always wanted you to feel like you were supported. Maybe I don't always do it perfectly, but I did want you to feel like that. Um, I know I have stepped away and turned down things because I wanted to be, closer available and you know i've had thoughts of man maybe if i had made that sacrifice i'd be further in my career if i had done that work trip instead of saying i couldn't make it because of my kid maybe you know i wouldn't have been laid off from that job whatever it would have been so you know i i like I i just think i just think that there's a burden in every role but i think the maternal burden sits different and i think women moms are judged differently and we are held to a different caliber so if you are doing something for you people are going to question you know what about your husband what about your kids whereas if you're doing something no one people hardly say you know well david like like if you hypothetically got a job that had you traveling and you were missing things i don't think people would be like Oh, David, what about your family? They'd understand that as a man, this is a sacrifice you need to make. But in turn, if I took a position that had me traveling, that had me busy, you know, not with my kids all the time. Oh, well, what about the kids? You know, they're developing. They're still young. They need their mom, blah, blah, blah. So that's that's why I say I don't feel that a man could make that statement um, and not get attacked because it'd be like, bruh, People, so, ex- society expects that of you, but women were held to a different standard when it comes to our kids. So one, um, there's a couple of things. One, I think we're, th- we're either misunderstanding one another or, or we're conflating because I was more, um, speaking to just marriage in general, right? Like you're going to have periods where you don't like this person. Oh, you're going to have periods where you have to sacrifice for this person. You're going to have periods where you're like, why is this person doing this and that? Why is there joy with something else and not with me? Mm-hmm. Or why like, am I married to this person? Why am I married to this person? Like if a man said just those things, like he would be eviscerated for it, I think, uh, as compared to whatever Michelle is feeling. Um, I think we got to be careful. Like not every marriage has kids. So mm-hmm. we can't 
talk about we can't say oh a man can never say this because motherhood a man can never match a motherhood well not every marriage has kids mm-hmm. so that's it children at that point would be or motherhood fatherhood at that point would be irrelevant because it's just husband wife but i still um, think wife expectations differ from husband I, expectations in, in a heterosexual relationship i think traditionally speaking i would absolutely agree with you because you can't look at the history of of marriage in this country and not not see that um i think in a more modern progressive world it's not so cut and dry mm-hmm. uh for couples without kids um where we see, you know, uh, women ascending all over the, the, the business landscape to, we see, we've got like the most female CEOs, like women are, are doing more now than they ever have as it pertains to careers. Um, so I don't know that it's that cut and dry anymore as it used to be where it was just defaulted that the, the wife would stay home and tend to the house Mm -hmm. and tend to the kids if they were kids. Uh, I, I think it's a little more, um, it's a little less uh, automatic these days. So, um, <clears throat> traditionally speaking, yes, but uh, I, I don't know that it's that it's a given anymore. Um, and you know, I gotta say, one, it takes. I I, I don't like. Um, I don't. I want to clarify one thing because I don't. You you weren't attacking me, but I still want to to be clear. If I do anything, it's very. It's a waste and almost sleeping. If I do anything, it's extremely rare that I just do it, right? I always ask you, like, hey, I was thinking about doing this. Is this okay with you? Mm-hmm. And you could legitimately say no because that's your, my, your right as my wife and as the person who's going to have to take care of the kids if, it, if what I want to do doesn't involve them. That's absolutely your right. That's one thing I want us to be better about. Call it New Year's resolution or whatever. Like, you talk about with Missy being more selfish like having a mindset of selfishness being okay like i want us to be more selfish with each other like i want and part of that is being honest like there are times where yes we probably should you know sacrifice for the the betterment or the happiness of the other person but i don't want you continuously saying yes to things that you don't want to say yes to which only further builds your resentment toward me or when i go do something so I always ask like, Hey, is this cool with you? And you always say, yes. Um, I constantly encourage you to do things. If there's a guilt thing, I mean, you're right. I'm not a mom, so I, I can't say, but if I'm telling you to go do stuff, if I'm telling you to go out, have fun as I normally do, um, you know, there shouldn't be I, I would hope that we you can get to a place where there shouldn't be any guilt because one, our marriage is for us. Our family is ours. Like the only people whose only people whose opinions should ultimately matter are the ones within who that reside within these walls. So if people on Facebook are saying, "Oh, why is just, didn't Jessica just go to didn't just just go somewhere? Why is she in Cancun again? She's gone for six days. Like it doesn't matter because I want you to go. I want you to have a good time. I want you to chill out on the mimosas, but I want you to go have a good time." Because you deserve it. You deserve more. So I I, I hear the and, and, and I and I as a as a man, as a husband, I wonder if some of this is just like like some sort of some some small level of narcissism where it's like, oh my gosh, like I have all these things that I have to bear. And I'm like, in terms of how people view you for going on vacation or going out, like, who cares? what people say as long as I'm not saying it like if I if I'm saying something then that's that's an issue but I'm not and I'm not going to and I never I never will so it's like I guess what society like society ain't in our house society don't pay our bills society ain't raising our well some of society is raising our kids because they influence but by and large anything that happens in this house society ain't got nothing to do with it so why do I care what some people who at the end of the day don't matter would think of me if i if, or think of you if you go out or you take two five plus day trips in a 90 day period or a 90 day window like it doesn't matter to me so um i hate that women that mothers feel like they have all these burdens some of them are legit right like kids we've seen it like statistics show first year and a half two years like 
you have kids like the dad is pretty useless in the eyes of the baby like they always want the mom like none of our girls have wanted anything to do with me for like within the first couple of years with the exception of Savi, i think because the pregnancies are so close together um so i get it the mother the bond with the mother and her children for uh but for a mother who actually mothers um will always be different um maybe stronger than that of a father and his children i get that um but you know i don't want you i don't want you walk i don't want you going out having a good time and feeling guilty because you're not with the kid like with the girls like they need to get used to you not being around because at some point they're not going to be around <laughs> right like they're going to go off and do things so they need to know that hey you know sometimes mommy has to do things and maybe that that paves the way for them to know hey my mom worked um and she traveled sometimes for work and she still knew how, how to have a good time and relax and do things for her so that you can be their example just like my dad was an example for me in terms of always being around for his kids <laughs> So I just think, man, we let society drive too many of like society, you know, drive a lot of opinions and, 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 um, mindsets and then ways that we feel about ourselves and others. And I just don't think it's necessary because in the grand scheme of things, the, the amount of people who actually matter at the end of the day, when it comes to decision-making, it's probably smaller than we consider. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I, one, I do think it's so I, to go back to disagreeing with you, I do think a man could absolutely say this, um, and be well, well within his rights. Um, the comments, not including children, but maybe even, even including children. Cause again, we don't know what, what everybody's marriage situation is like, but I understand what you're saying in terms of like more than likely the woman, the mother is going to have to, to bear a lot of the responsibility of the kids. But I mean, I absolutely could say it. He would just get evis Roasted. eviscerated for it. Mm -hmm. And a man dumb enough to say it or brave enough to say it might deserve it. <laughs> but um, I'm just glad again that we're having the conversations mm -hmm. because I think, as you said, um, I, I do think it's important to know what the thick of marriage is like. First couple of years, you know, you, although ours were really tough. Um, I mean, it still is. I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, it is <laughs> tough. And I, 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 you know, our, our famously, our famous disagreement is, you know, I say marriage is difficult and you say it's not, it's work. I think there's not, I think the words are synonymous, but it's, it's difficult. Um, you said hard, not difficult. No, I said difficult. Okay. Because that was a big thing. Because you said, so what are you saying? I'm difficult. I, I, I remember vividly. I, I remember this one. Um, but I mean, it, it, I, I just feel like it is. I mean, there's just so much. But it doesn't, and I'm not to go back down this this rabbit hole, but um, like I likened it to, to weight training, right? Like it's difficult. Like I got I to gotta go tear my body down to get it to the place that I want to where I'm literally in love with it. Like I, where I just love, you know, I walk by the mirror and I, I double back, you know what I'm saying? And I look at, look at the bicep and I look at the back, you know what I'm saying? It got the little V coming out. So, but that process is difficult and I hate it sometimes and I don't always like it. And I don't always, <laughs> I don't always want to be a part of it, but I know what the end result is and I know where I'm trying to get to. And I know that, I'm only going to love my body more the more that I put into it and the more that I, you know, go through this difficult process. So, um, but yeah, marriage is, is, is crazy. It's not crazy difficult, but, but it's difficult, but it's, it's, it's like worth it. It's, it's the most difficult, beautiful, enjoyable, magical, um, like it, it's just, it's just, a, it's, it's fantastic. Um, but it's, it's not without its trying times and mm -hmm. it's, and it's, and it's 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 valleys uh, but the peaks are amazing i think the goal is to make sure that you don't hit the same valley twice um or, or three times or four times so <clears throat> uh, i'm all for marriage conversations i'll put it that way because 
I think it's I think it's great. So this is a two plus hour episode. Thanks to you. Yeah, but you know what growth is? You know what growth is? I'm gonna tell you what growth is. And you know I love you, right? You know you're the best thing that ever happened to me. Kids included. Cause as your dad famously said. <laughs> I can make another one of them, but I can't find me another Jessica. Um we were supposed to record at a certain time, right? And you had to run out. Cool. Normally I would be upset. But I was like, you know what? She didn't sleep well. I I thought not my natural uh process is to think of how this affects me first. Right. So maybe I'm proving your point when you talk about dads to take care of themselves. Um and I, I started. I was like, I was like, wait a minute. She didn't sleep well. She had a really hectic week, so maybe she's still recovering because she was on the couch all day long. She cleaned the kitchen. She got the girls bathed. She got hair done. She got the girls to bed. And she's doing something for the reason why she's leaving the house so that she can do something for other people who have, you know, affected our child's life one way or another. So if we got to start the interview a little later, or we got to start recording a little later, that's fine. You know, Messi was cool with it. Um, so I think that's, I think that's, that in and of itself is, 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 uh, kind of like a microcosm of just like some of the growth that you could have, um, in marriage, because even eight years in, I'm still, I still have moments where I think about how, how does this affect me instead of, well, how do I, how does this affect my wife? having to go out to Target at like nine o'clock at night, not looking her best <laughs> in terms of, uh, cause I know you just ran out the house. So I'm like, mm -hmm. did she get dressed? Um, you know, no one wants to go to Target cause we don't really leave the house late. Mm -mm. That's not what we do. Um, even when like, when we go out, it's like six, seven is like the latest mm -hmm. we'll go out. Um, so if, if one of us leaving the house at nine, it's like a rare occasion. So, I was like, nah, because she's, she's doing all this and, you know, it's not that big a deal. So let me go. So growth. I'm growing. I'm evolving. I'll do that for you because anybody else, I'd let them have it. But you, you special. <sighs> so I have 10 minutes, so this will be, this will be fun. Um, what else? Nothing, right? No, cool. You look, I, you I look know good. You stop. Thanks. You look good. Um, but don't become don't be don't be making interviews late no more, and then be going past the a lot of time that we have but for the interview. I'll flow how the spirit wants me to flow. Well, you tell the spirit to flow within an hour next time. <sighs> Did you want to touch on any of this? No, I want to go to bed. Although the World Cup final was crazy. We Phenomenal. Watched, we watched one, it today. Of, one of the best soccer matches I've ever watched in my entire 32 years of existence. Yeah, we were we were screaming at the team, yeah. as I'm sure most yeah. millions of other people Sonoma were around the world. was looking at us like, what She's is like, what wrong with you people? What are y'all doing? And realizing that Salas doesn't truly understand the concept of, of soccer, but like we'll pick up key terms. She was like, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> yeah. Look, she would occasionally look up from her tablet. And to yell at the TV. Yeah. But um it was, it was a it was it was a good game. Great, it was fun. It was a great game. It made me real like remember my appreciation for soccer. Yeah. Um I, and it's just a beautiful it's, it's such a beautiful sport because you don't like basketball, you know, you'll get however hundred. however many shot attempts a game. Mm -hmm. Football, you get you get a number of attempts at the end zone, you can kick field goals, but soccer you gotta be you gotta be Precise I've always respected soccer as probably one of the more like the word I, I'm going to say reputable, but I feel like an athlete who plays soccer is probably top yeah. uh, in comparison to other, not, not diminishing the work that goes into other sports. Um, but soccer, like I, like watching those guys on the, I remember when I played soccer and you work so hard to get the ball to the other team's goal and then someone going to kick it all the way across. That's like, <sighs> so damn, now I got to go all the way back just over got, there. Just got down here. And yeah. it's like, you know, soccer is not set up where it's like, 
just because you're a Ford, you just you got to stay right in this space. No, everybody is everywhere. So, you know, I really, really respect soccer. Um, and I love that it's essentially the only global sport. It's really the only sport that brings the entire world together. It's like, basketball. No, I mean, because you don't have like a World Cup type tournament for basketball. Yes, you do. No, the Olympics doesn't count. Yeah, FIBA. Anyway. Um, Federal like, International or the, uh, what's it? Something International Basketball Association. Yeah, but it's not everywhere. Okay. But like something about soccer and the World Cup, it just stirs everyone's appreciation for football, soccer, that sport and, and seeing it, all these countries come together and rooting for themselves and rooting for each other and seeing just the passion back home when people score. And I, I just, I don't know that I've ever watched a basketball game and like screamed like at the TV, the way I scream when a sock, when someone scores a goal. And I love how, you know, with soccer, one you could literally just get one goal in a game and and that's it you play a sport like basketball you're getting digits triple digits points football you're getting double digit points soccer it's like three points two one point can make an entire tournament so right. i i definitely enjoy and appreciate soccer i really hope that one day like a black african country can get further in the world cup but um all of the teams, I mean, you really come and you play your heart out and, you know, everyone's not a winner, but to be able to represent your country on, on the world stage is, is a big deal. So I applaud them for that. Agreed. Uh, looking forward to the, uh, the next World Cup that will take place in, in North, every city North in America, America but Charlotte. Yeah. And I won't get over Charlotte. the fact that Kansas is on that list, but Charlotte is not. I just don't understand. Kansas city. I don't care what kind of Kansas it is. It's a Kansas, and Kansas there's City. Charlotte, and Charlotte is not um, participating. We, we in the got, Cup. you know, we got Atlanta. We got the got the usual suspects. I'm tired of Atlanta. Oh, I'm going to L.A. You can come with me. I'm not going I'm to L.A. A, take a solace with me. No, she gonna roll and watch her tablet or play her Switch the whole time. She gonna be there regardless. Wait, she'll be ten. She'll be she be eleven. Eleven. She's seven. Actually, she's still six in my hand. Um, so yeah, this is our second to last episode of this, uh, I guess we're going to call it a season mm -hmm. and, uh, we will be back next week for a post Christmas, uh, episode. We'll show off all the gifts we're not buying. That we're not buying. You know, I forgot to buy the PJs. I did. I was supposed to buy them with solace and the night we were supposed to buy them, something happened. We didn't, but it looks like the PJs still fit the girls. Are oh, you really upset about this? So I got to find us some PJs. All right, I'll get us some PJs. Um, I don't know what happened. I just, and Christmas is like Sunday. Like I was leaving mom and dad's house and I was like, all right, so we'll see you in a couple of weeks. She was like, we won't see you next Sunday. I'm like, why would I see you next Sunday? She's like, it's Christmas. I'm like, bro, I thought I had, a, I thought I had a two week cushion. No, it's crazy. It's it really like, I feel like you get to a certain point and Christmas comes like Too eight fast. months, like eight months. Out of the it's, year, it's like really it's close. like every 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 eight months. And now I like I was like, oh, I don't know what to get the girls, and I realized I have to get Savi a cute cute kitchen. Gotta get the cute. I was thinking about that today because she she like has pooped on the potty, and she keeps Regularly. saying, "I'm going to get a cute cute yeah. kitchen for pooping on the potty." And I was like, and I still want to get them a kids Ford Bronco, but David said no, no, because they're gonna grow it, and there's just gonna be another thing to take up space in the garage. No, they're not. By the time it Sonoma will take over it. I put Sonoma in a Bronco. I think solace driving, Sonoma gonna run somebody. Sonoma gonna run somebody. Sonoma in the backseat is a beautiful thing. And by so, the time they all uh, age out, you have like four, at least five years on that thing. So we'll be back for a post Christmas episode. Maybe I'll be able to get some PJs in here in time. But I think the last, I like the last year still fit. I don't know if they'll fit Sonoma. Sonoma's might not. That might be. That might be a stretch. Pun intended. Um, I feel so bad. Um, I might be able. Great to, job, man. I might be able to make something happen. One job. I might be able to make something happen. One job. Uh, and then we're gonna take a break, so we'll be off the whole month of January, and uh, potentially some or all of February. But we'll be sure to update everybody with what our plans are. Um, we've got some other 
uh, things that we need to tend to. Um, one of them being rest. <laughs> And uh, some other things that we're actually trying to get. And up, you know what's going to happen? Trying to get up off the ground. All of the newsworthy stuff is going to happen in the next month and a half. That's what Twitter's for, baby. All and the we'll news. be we'll still be active on Facebook. All the Post newsworthy some, things, like Post some stuff. Trump's going to take over. He's going to raise a coup and become president again, like mid February. It's going to be wild. There's going to be like an anniversary insurrection. We'll just wait so, for it. As I'm literally trying to, to we're not fall asleep, we're while, do emergency pod. Why I close this episode? Um, we're going to take a break and we'll be back in 2023. No new set. It's going to be the exact same set. I think we might read, re do something. Read what? I, I have, I have vision. Oh, you got visions now. Okay. I always have vision. Okay. But you don't be listening. No, I, if you want, I want to put in, you can be more than welcome. All right. Cool. All right, y'all. Peace. Goodbye. And we'll see you next week. Merry Christmas. And a happy new year. Even though we'll see y'all next week. None but some grow pains. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. Stop me now. Stop me now. Yeah. I done.